We're supposed to talk now? Okay, good. Uh, welcome to Double Fine Game Night. Uh, I'm Jeff Solis. I am Asif from Two Player. Introduce yourselves, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Kent Hudson. Uh, I worked on this game. I'm Ryan Matson. I also worked on this game. Yes, and you guys were the creators of Near Death. Is that correct? The game we're playing today? That is correct. Uh, who else was on your team? Uh, we had a part-time artist named Alex Munn. Um, let's see, the soundtrack was a guy named ASC. Great uh, soundtrack. Great soundtrack, by the soundtrack. Um, <laughs> we didn't even get money from the soundtrack, only a little bit, so that's not even self-serving. Uh, <laughs> a company a called CGBot did the artwork, so a lot of the artwork as well. Who am I forgetting? Uh, and we had a writer, a part-time writer. Yes, writer, uh, yes, who, Danny Manley. Yeah, Danny Manley. He's awesome, the writing game's great. Oh, and uh, Kelly McKeever does the uh, voice of the main character. All right, well, let's... Let's right. get to near death. Uh, what is condition one? Don't play uh, it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go normal. Yeah, okay. normal. normal. Yeah, normal. Please. Condition one is die within 30 Please. seconds of starting the game. <laughs> yeah. Condition one is for if you played it before and you really want you want that challenge. Okay, okay. This is the intro. I've heard this 5,000 times. <laughs> It started off as like a way more hardcore survival game, like the traditional survival style of, you know, Rush and Daisy and uh, Long Dark and stuff like that, where it's like meters and you've got health and, you know, you've got food and thirst and you've got to grow your own food, like all that stuff. And uh, I kind of found that I, I got bored with that because it's like you're playing the whole game in a menu. And yeah. so uh, I just wanted to, I kind of threw, it, threw away the prototype after the first three months and was like, I just want to make a game that's about the experience itself, like the visceral feeling of being caught in a snowstorm and being like, you know, 30 seconds from dying. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is all about like, there's, you know, very minimal HUD other than obviously your, um, you know, objects down in the in the left, your player tools and stuff. Um, and it's all about just like immersive, visceral feel of like, I'm about to freeze to death. Um, and it's in your face, it's moment to moment. And you know, there's no hunger and thirst and all these other kind of extraneous systems. It is just about that direct experience. So, and like, that's what the whole game is about. There's, that, that's it. It's, it's about trying to survive a blizzard in Antarctica. We, we landed poorly. Yeah, this was... Uh, Emergency landing. Yeah. It was, it was a Not good, the way you would want to land. Yeah. That was condition one, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in easy difficulty, you actually land the plane just fine. You get back in and you can yeah. just take off. That's, yeah, there's a flight attendant that helps you off the plane. They roll out a little stairway. And it's everything. just an eight-hour monologue of a guy on a plane. Flying so up. have you played this before at all? Uh, I have not. Okay. Go. Oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be good stuff. Trying to drink the beer? Yes. That would be yeah, nice. I'm Jeff's obviously playing here. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was going to push the chair around now. Let's do some push-ups. Full chair physics. Ooh, kerosene. Place it on the ground. Ooh, okay. Come here. What does that say? I like that. It's a separate model. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, that's a that's a dynamic needle, my friend. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll always tell you the current outdoor temperature. That is correct. Outside of your the home you're playing. Is it? Uh, okay. yeah. so we, so, you should stay yeah. here, right? As long as you enable location services. Okay, so do, do I have to put this thing down? Yeah. And yes. then I get warm? Okay. Nice little wavy effect. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, see, there's, there's no meters or anything. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Don't be wasteful, my friend. <laughs> so if you're holding it, it won't run. Right. Yeah. Put it down, it will. Uh, yeah. So, uh, side note: When we were playing uh, Long Dark here a while back, um, I got really obsessed with having as many calories in my body as possible. <laughs> and so, like, it's I like was like lunch. this yeah. crazy person running, wandering around in the wilderness, just like devouring anything that I could possibly <laughs> eat. That was pretty fun. The um, the omnivore playthrough. Yeah, <laughs> just punch wolves so I could eat their bodies. <laughs> It's like a crate full of protein powder. Yeah. <laughs> like super yeah. Just yeah. scooping it in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, there's 
shining nice. lights over there. I gotta yeah. go inside. It's, it's well, weird. This is obviously where you want to warm up in this snow-filled room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the game's been out three months, and I'm still just terrified that there's going to be some ugly bug or crash or something. <laughs> that's what you're actually scared of? Yeah. That's the true horror of this yeah, game. Yeah, that's the true horror of this game. Is, is to be the developer and mm, watching yeah, people play it. Watching people play it live <laughs> in front of an audience of dozens. Actually, I have no idea how many people. Tens. Tens? Tens. 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 Yeah. So dozens yeah. is yeah. actually yeah. like... In the teens. <laughs> actually, guys, it was 21. That's yeah. not even two dozen yet, so... <laughs> uh, like, I appreciate that you've tethered the chair there because that was I would have taken my chair friend on a vacation. I mean, you could try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you could. Oh, have a blast. I got yeah. Aha! Have a blast with chair friends. <laughs> yeah, we could we could we could have made those. We could have made that ball. an achievement, like mm -hmm. the like the gnome and uh, half a two, right? Uh, the oh yeah, yeah. I will check my goals. Don't die. <laughs> There's a phone back there. Yeah, those phone lines might not be connected anymore. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll see. Man, someone went ape shit in this locker room. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Yes, PC, oh, Mac, awesome. and Linux. It's on Steam. You can uh, also get it on uh, the Humble Store, which is just a Steam key. So. Um, the best way to buy it, if you're thinking about it, is from the website, because then uh, the humble widget on the website would get a bigger cut, so, uh, you know, but that still gives you a Steam key and everything. But yeah, and, yep, full controller support, achievements. I'm playing with a controller. Yeah, he's playing with a controller right now. <laughs> um, Xbox One controller, 360 controller, and PS4 controller are like the ones we use most extensively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, full controller support, including menus and like, you know, whole deal. In fact, play it with a controller it's be because yeah. Kent did a lot of really good work <laughs> to support that. Yeah, little things like the buttons showing up in the tooltips and stuff like that was... Uh, it's fun. Yeah. That's fun. The, the, the thankless work of, yeah. of integrating <laughs> controller support. That's right. That's what right. happened with that door? It looks like it's frozen. It's frozen it's over. Yeah. Uh, not so far. Um, it might end up on uh, possibly on the Xbox One. I haven't, I'm not sure yet. But it's out on PC right now. It's PC out on PC Linux. right now. You could be playing this yep. tonight. Uh -huh. Right now. You like, don't even have to finish the like stream. And there's like a bundle with the soundtrack included. Oh. oh shit. Some hot faxes. Mm. Yeah. Rub your face on the wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Unity. Like every other indie game that's ever been created. <laughs> the teletype. This is how you talk to your old, your yeah. old buddy Jack back in base. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were trying to come up with a way that we knew we could deliver some you know, narrative that needed to happen in some player direction, yeah. but not have to voice characters because yeah. for a very small indie team, voicing characters is expensive and tough. I mean, it's tough for everyone. Like, yeah, yeah. Doing VO anywhere is not easy. Um, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, they also don't want to do it yourselves. because What did somebody refer to this as? Like early, early 1980s, like, you know, basically just text messages. Yeah, it's or, basically, mm -hmm. yeah, the text message of the early 80s. Did you guys try to do this without the first person narration before casting that? Do you mean, for narration, do you mean like being able like to talk? Like the, 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 your character that's talking. Did you try to do it without that? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, like, I don't know if there was a plan other than like, just kind of what I was saying earlier about um, just trying to make it as immersive as possible without mm -hmm. um, relying on meters and like having a cold meter on your screen, stuff like that. So it kind of becomes, if you're going to bite that off, then you have to use every channel that you can to try to convey the information. So That's you notice that as you get colder, the screen starts to desaturate, it'll start getting blurry, mm -hmm. um, sh you know, and, and for the character to be giving those shivering sounds and stuff like that is just another channel. Um, you also notice that the hand starts to get frosty if you get cold. So like, mm -hmm. it kind of becomes, if you're going to not have the super clear feedback of something that has the meters on the screen, then you've got to turn every other knob you can. So um, how many puns did you guys use during the making of this? Uh, we we abused most puns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, if, if you can think yeah. of the pun, we probably made yeah. it. And yeah. Abused it. How many times did you say "stay frosty"? 
Uh, maybe once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's the snow cat. The, 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 if you've ever seen the Twitter account, you'll see an animated gift of the snow cat. I used a battery. It's, yeah. I just want to drive it around. Yeah. yeah. Not till yeah. the end, my friend. Not till the end. <laughs> but in terms of like relaying information about guidance and stuff, mm -hmm. um, we didn't really want the main character talking yeah. all that much. Um, it felt like it took you out of the being in the situation. Sure. Yeah. See there was a brief period where we had a lot of like Duke Nukem one-liner type. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> stick a bubble gum on the shelf, you mean? Or yeah. yeah. But it's also like, you know, part of the experience, and like this is the intro, so the situation's not really difficult right now. This is not super harsh. We're kind of easing you into it. Mm -hmm. Getting tutorials on how the mechanics work and stuff like that. So this is pretty easy, the, the beginning of the game. Um, but kind of integral to it is okay. that feeling of I am lost, I'm on my own, I'm hundred miles, hundreds of miles from any other human being. This place is deserted. I've got very few resources. And so you, it, we aren't trying to intentionally make you feel lost, but we definitely want you to have to think about where you are, how you're going to get to the next place, and like, and and kind of have a character that's not omniscient, essentially. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the story that comes out of that experience isn't the story that's being told to you. Like, you're getting guidance from your, your contact back at McMurdo, who, Jack, who you're talking to on right. your teletype. Um, but a lot of that story is about like what's actually happening to you as you're traveling between the buildings that you're sealing up and, mm. and you know um, uh, trying to survive and, and, and push your way forward into the maze. What am I doing? Come on. Come on, Jeff. What are you doing, Jeff? I don't know. Don't, don't die. Don't die. Yeah, don't don't die. You, get your shit together. Did you see that? Did you tip? see the tool tip on how to craft things? Uh, well, I was freezing to death. You at the were. Time, yeah, so that's. I'm just gonna crouch you down here. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't freeze. Just crouch in the corner and hope for the best. So, uh, wait, wait for so the. So you're sealing here, which is good. If you hit yeah. X, you can then go to ah, crafting. Yeah. yeah. You can make things. Oh, window, oh, window patch. patch. Ooh. Which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice shot, by the way. Not making it. What's that? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I did a ton of research, especially for that first version of the game, um, which was like super simulated and hardcore. Um, I actually uh, interviewed two people who have actually worked at Antarctic stations, um, and I mean, like, and the game used to be really hardcore. So it was like, I had a hypothermia simulation, all kinds of wind chill stuff going on. I mean, like really, really detailed. Um, like fingers falling off kind of <laughs> no, style? No, like. not, not quite like that, but, but definitely like the environment was like super simulated. Um, and it was just boring. Like I, it, it just got to be like, okay, this meter, that meter, I'm playing the game in menus. And it was just boring. Whereas like, um, you know, I don't know how far we'll get today to where the game really kicks up and you're really in these intense blizzards, but like, we just like steadily, there, there's tons of notes all in the code for this game of like, note from Kent on, you know, June 2nd, uh, this is where the blah, blah, blah used to be. Sync back to this date if you want to see the more simulated version of this. Um, but it just, one by one, just pulled out the calorie stuff and the body temperature and, um, you know, kind of reduced everything out instead of being like real temperatures. It's just like there's a property called cold level that goes from zero to one. Zero, you're good, one, you're dead, and it's just constantly going back and forth, and it's not simulated um, too deeply, but it's kind of all you need. Yeah, we definitely found like over the course of playtesting with people that, that ended up being all we needed in the game, yeah. because if it's that much more complicated under the hood, it's really hard to represent that to a player mm -hmm. um, and to and to help people understand like how they can change those variables. So, yeah. Given that it's purely now about the fact that you're freezing to death, it's, it's a lot easier to sell that with the, those effects on the screen and and uh, the audio that you hear when you start to get cold. Like now you can hear her, she's hear your teeth chattering. And I don't know if I missed it, but did you already use the second teletype machine or no? Uh, well, I looked at it yeah. and, and it was... Yeah, uh, there was no new messages. Yeah. Gotcha. No new messages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, like, um, I remember when uh, one of our friends was, was uh, playtesting the game, he got to that teletype and was like, man, I was hoping I could, you know, have more of a conversation right. um, and be like, hey, I made it, or, you know, and like, but, but all, the, all the teletype conversations in the game right now are like crafted, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. here's the conversation when you get here, so, mm -hmm. um, 
but it would have been nice to have like a little bit more of like a proactive dialogue system. But again, like you know, two and a half developers and you know, making the game in a matter you know less than well less than two years. So sure. what are you trying to do right now? Uh, I'm just I'm. Hoovering up, up with, with literally everything around some, here. Some clamps and some solder and yeah. all the good stuff. Crafting a delicious lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to make some sort of airplane out mm. of this Ooh, duct there tape. there you go. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Duct tape airplane. Yeah, no, I need frayed wire. There's a lot of discussion in the chat about the Unreal 3 engine. You guys want to talk a bit about why you decided to use Unity? Well, uh, I mean, Ken had worked with Unity previously. Yeah, yeah. My uh, the previous game that I did as an indie was um, called The Novelist, and I made that in Unity. And at the time, when that was what I started that in late 2011, and at that time, Unreal wasn't really a viable in indie game engine. Um, it, it, whereas Unity, you could get a license for like 1,500 bucks, I think it was. That you know, just a one-time license, and then there's no royalties on the back end and stuff like that. And you know, obviously, that's changed a lot in the last five years. Um, there are a lot of indies who are using Unreal now, um, but at the time, it, Unity was the engine you used if you were an indie developer, and so it's kind of like, okay, I made one game with Unity. When I'm going to do the next one, it's you just build up so much sort of um, institutional knowledge yeah, about yeah. it that it's just like, okay, I, you know, and I, by the end of this game, I'm just a freaking wizard in Unity, so um, like a, I don't know, 20th level necromancer or something, uh, so I can do anything pretty <laughs> 20th much. Bring you back home from the dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, and it's true. And so, yeah, I was actually really excited to come and to use Unity when I when I joined Kent on the project because um, I we both used Unreal before, mm -hmm. actually. At different oh different yeah, places. first ten years of my career, I used uh, Unreal. And so it was like, you know, it was really nice to like try a different tool set. And Unity is actually designed to make things happen quickly, mm -hmm. um, which is which is really really fun. Yeah, compared to Unreal Three, which was, you know, the the Unreal the current Unreal at the time that um, especially when I started on the Novelist. Um, that had a really slow iteration time, and it had pretty bad um, sort of designer prototyping tools, I'd say. Um, and th I've heard that that's been addressed in Unreal. I've heard that Unreal 4 is pretty great with the blueprint system and stuff like that, so I'm definitely not trying to talk, talk junk about Unreal 4. I've heard Unreal 4 is really good. But um, but Unity at the time had just like, you know, you click play, and you're playing in the editor, and it's exactly the same content. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, that's you know, right. so it just made you sense at the time. And then, no one <laughs> uses binders for you know, anything else. Once, once you know yeah. something well, you stick with it. Yeah. And that, I mean, yeah, that institutional knowledge cannot be understated. It affects, yeah. it, that affects game teams small and large. Yeah. The moment that you switch engines on something, like the amount of, especially if your team is large, the amount of knowledge that you throw out is enormous. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really, really hard to get back there, especially when it comes to shipping a project too, this because you gain so much knowledge about an engine when you're actually uh, finishing this, it. Yeah, it is, yeah, this. You should, oh, look, oh, hey. this is the most video game note ever. Yeah, this, we had to put at least one in, right? Yeah. Does anyone ever leave themselves little biographical notes like that? Those, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think we should it's start. Such a video game thing. I think we should start. So you're gonna want to go upstairs here. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Just to. Well, not you. Got to go outside. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You don't have to. If you're a speed runner, you can figure out how to go back up there. But uh, yeah, wiring, yeah. Don't yeah, hoover up all the loot. Yeah. All your sweet loot. Yeah. So example of like the cold effects, like the screen's getting a little bit blurry. If you look at your hand, it's like pretty iced over now and it just keeps getting worse. Get a little bit of motion blur going on. Can I light myself on fire to get warm? Oh. You can still go up to the right though, or you can go warm up. Probably a good idea. Warming up is smart. Oh, is it not doing its thing? I got a juicy. Was it not so well, what's the, the thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is that? Kidding. Oh, there's a door. Oh. It's because that door. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we did this so much in development. Yeah, that freaking door. You'd run in here to, to warm up like while testing, and that door would be open. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> Who put that there? Yeah, and then I'd get angry at myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whoever built this was a real Yeah, yeah real jerk. Uh, oh, the, yeah, the, the thing, um, I'm just a massive fan of that movie. I've watched that movie and the, the John Carpenter and Kurt Russell commentary I don't, millions of times. Um, they actually just came out with a really good Blu-ray, if you're a fan. Uh, the new Blu-ray is amazing. But um, I'm a big fan of that um, in general, but it wasn't a huge inspiration for the project just because this isn't like, this is just you versus the weather. Um, there's no monsters, there's no jump scares, there's no, you know. Hey, you were down there before. So, um, it, I don't know if I'd call it an inspiration. I mean, like, we definitely looked at, you know, um, it's a similar time period, so um, just kind of like, what does an Antarctic base from this time period kind of look like? 
Um, so maybe a, maybe some art direction. We probably use some screen captures. Um, but yeah, we definitely use it for visual inspiration. Yeah, yeah. It's like hypothetically the same time period. It, it, it well, it actually is. It's 1982. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh -oh. you are down a canvas, my friend. But there's some containers. Maybe you can get a desk or a locker. I don't think canvas comes from desks. Oh. Hey, that's what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yep. Got it. Nailed it. But it's getting ready to get get cold in here. Oh, for the localized versions, I changed the colors on the things so that people know them. Because I because I didn't change the inside. You're a smart person. <laughs> You're doing that. I do what I can. Yeah, that's it's just a that's... just a material color. Any real developer would have done that earlier. <laughs> Well, some of us aren't real developers. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's just because I realized I wasn't going to localize the in-world signs. Yeah, exactly. I could, and it would be a nightmare. <laughs> oh, better, oh, nice. You start to learn your way around. Yeah, feel bit. like you want to move in a little. I, <laughs> you want to stay frosty. I, I'm, I'm good at. Uh, oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> you know, you just build that mental map mm -hmm. of, of the area. Yep. We're going to be so lost when you leave. <laughs> I have not been paying close attention. There you Good, go. it's perfect. <laughs> we did try, like, I mean, we, you know, obviously play tested this quite a bit, and yeah. we did try to put a lot of in-world signage in so that when you're going between buildings, mm. it's it's not actually fun most of the time to be completely lost. Sure, right. right. Yeah. It's nice to kind of know where you're trying to go mm. and just be like, oh my gosh, am I actually going to make it? Um, but there are times that you will get lost. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's times I get lost. Yeah. This I'm is, definitely this seeing this a lot more guidance than I expected from the way you originally described it. Yeah, so. you know, just just because there's there's nothing obstructing you right now. Mm. Um, when the weather kicks up. When the weather when the weather kicks up, like it's not maybe, fun to know. Yeah, to maybe, not know. Yeah. yeah, maybe about halfway through the game, you just can't like when you can't see those signs anymore. Mm -hmm. It becomes the challenge of trying to fight through these like blinding blizzards where you cannot see five feet in front of your face. Oh, okay. So this is where. This yeah, so you're good. Now. Yeah, it yeah, is on. It's powered. powered. So you got comms and and, uh, and hab and chili. Uh, Ryan and I were the only two full-time developers. Um, we had a part-time artist, and then um, we needed to get a bunch of art production done towards the end. So we had a, a company called CG Bot do. Um, Art outsourcing, you and then Danny was our writer. Um, he, he worked on the game for it's, it's got power. a couple months. Yeah, it's all powered up. Ooh. Yes, yeah. a couple months. Yeah. yeah. So once, yeah. So once the building's powered, you don't have to worry about your heater anymore. So it, each building is kind of like a small puzzle of like, okay, get there. It's broken. Figure out how to fix it. Okay, now it's safe. Now I can kind of do the second pass of exploring or even just getting my quest from the teletype or whatever. Yeah. So wandering around and stealing stuff before I appropriating. Equipment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that the abandoned station is going to care too much. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> I can imagine that. Um, oh, I, I, spoiler! At the end, you get a bill for everything that you've taken. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, you're not going to get picked up anytime soon. Come, yeah. Here comes one of my. Uh, I think one of my favorite lines is coming up here. <laughs> that I, I I like that line. That's pretty bleak, and I love this line too. <laughs> a little bit of gallus humor, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Danny did a good job. Yeah, punching the, punching this up. Yeah, and we actually had a completely different story until a couple months before ship, and mm -hmm. then just we couldn't make it work, and so we just lit it on fire and. This ended up being much better, I think. He did a good job dealing with us lighting it on fire as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. All right. So did you have to cut out big chunks of the hand. game to make that work? or what um, We cut out. So did you have to like cut out content from the game to make that work? Yeah, we did cut out some content. Um, not a lot of content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Fortunately, we had developed it uh, smartly enough that we didn't we didn't invest a ton in those kind of risky areas. Yeah, that we knew, and that's part of the reasons why we changed it because like we cannot afford to support this the right way. Like it's not that we didn't like the story we were trying to tell. Yeah, we didn't have exactly. the resources to support it, and so it was just kind of like, you can do something smaller and do it well, or do something bigger and do it poorly. And mm. um, we did not want to do the latter. Yeah. Can you tell us the original story without spoiling this one? Sure. <laughs> Go for it. We, we could. Uh, I mean, the original story, if somebody else was here at the basement. Yeah. 
Mm, yeah, you, you find out cool. that someone had stayed behind, yeah, mm. and they're kind of like sort of sabotaging you. And it's, but, but it's like, we didn't have the resources to make them a character, so they're always off screen, mm -hmm. you know, and, and stuff like that. Um, we, the, the problem is, is that like the moment when you find that out was like such a yeah. fantastic reveal. We had, sure. it was such a good moment. That was the reason why we held on to it, I think. Held on to the story for so long was that the moment where that reveal happens was so freaking good mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. we were just like, I can't let yeah, this we go. Yeah, we didn't want to let it go. I mean, it was, yeah, it was really fun. It was a really neat yeah. thing. And then we couldn't pay it off. Yeah. At all. Again, it's, yeah. you know, two, two and a half people effectively working out. We were like, yeah, this just isn't going to happen, yeah. unfortunately. And we felt that that was going to be a bigger letdown. Right. Were you kicking yourself when you saw Firewatch then? <gasps> uh, <laughs> kicking ourselves? Well, maybe not. Oh, my that God. Bad. You turned off Jukebox. You monster. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wrote this song just for this game. This oh, is an cool. original song for the game. Yeah, just okay. yeah. Sure. Hey, you, you know. I'm in a survival situation. I'm getting serious. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you need to get serious you about playing some pool. You need to seriously play pool. That's right. Uh, uh, I feel like you just get under down here. About yeah. stepping over a chair. <laughs> get serious about washing a VCR. Oh no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we did not. Body awareness is hard to do. More like shoddy awareness. <laughs> if we did it, it would have yeah. been. Uh, yeah, again, no. team, team size and scope of the game. Like yeah. we, that, <laughs> body awareness is awesome in games. And when it's done well. Yeah, when it's done well. And that's, uh, it's, it's also a very hard problem. Yes. So we have an arm. This we seems really game. innocent right now, but the way you beat the final boss of this game is totally by playing pool and pushing chairs over. <laughs> yes. yes. It's all going to come back. Yeah, this is yes. tutorializing. Yeah. Yeah, the future yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one part of the previous story we held on to, was the pool battle. Yep. How's that front part of the flashlight show? What is uh, your, your battery uh -huh. level? Okay. The you're, what? you're definitely running out of batteries there. Now you got batteries again. Yeah, hey. yeah the amount of light coming out of it. Jesus. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like, is there a readout on oh, the Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite rooms in the game. Cool. It just looks cool. Well, somebody did. need a lot of canvas for that. Fix this. Yeah. But, uh, we need a roof patch. Yeah, canvas and duct tape. <laughs> yeah, 57 canvases. We'll be fine. 30 rolls of duct tape. You could have just made yourself a really awesome coat with this much canvas. Yeah, you could have, yeah. actually. Yeah, that's a good point. A really awesome what? Coat. A coat. Just oh. a giant, like, oh. snug, oh, you know. Oh, there's a coat. A snuggie. You there's could, a coat. You, yeah. can, you, you can, can make you, a coat later. Yeah, you can. Mm. There's, there's player upgrades. I think Tip. that might be what you find in the kitchen over here. It, it might be. <laughs> is it the coat one? How do you get in that kitchen, dude? Yeah. Some you might have to bra brave the elements. Smashing everything. Yeah, smash. yeah, yeah. You're like, I've been repairing windows, but now I'm going to smash all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Why is totally this place trapping that. me? Oh, man. Totally should have allowed that. The ladder to nowhere. Get a nice view up here. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look on the table. Whoa, a field survival manual. <laughs> what is that? Oh, this is the flashlight oh, you can upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade your flashlight if you want to yeah. craft that. The best part is that like the parts that you collect for that have nothing to do with what the description is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, uh, game development. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's there's a little upgrade uh, packages you can find through the game, to, and you can actually make yourself a better coat so that it, so you can stay warmer longer, mm -hmm. so you can basically stay on the elements longer. Um, the flashlight upgrade definitely is an upgrade. It, it gets very bright and very. Uh, oh, I should probably like not die. Oh, you are. Yeah. It's oh, unsealed. Is, is there a hole in the room? Yeah, well, the win the windows are broken yeah. right now. In Does there. this look oh, sealed? Yeah. Super dead. Uh, go in the next room. Maybe it won't be okay. Maybe even. Not this one, it's on field two. Wait, there's another room. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh. Bold. <sighs> oh, oh shit. Wow, good. The full black and white is actually really scary. It felt intense. <laughs> it's moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, dropping everything out is pretty rad, too. Yeah, it's, you uh, are, uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's your little last chance mechanic. You get, like, I think maybe 30 seconds, and mm. it's, it kind of like, yeah, it makes everything stark, so you have perfect vision, 
Um, you can sprint again. Um, one of the small things that we kept from the simulated version was um, once you're once you start getting too cold, you can't sprint anymore. You kind of get sluggish, so it adds a little tension if, if you're trying to get some work quickly. Um, sure. But yeah, that will yeah the the those effects to make that stuff fade in and out smoothly was the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> Try trying to make it so where like it goes to the black and white and it comes back without pops and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, a bunch like, of mm -hmm. jerks. Empty cupboard. They Achievement ate everything unlocked. like a bunch of Achievement assholes. Achievement unlocked. Chivo unlocked. <laughs> Just achieved it, bro. Ooh, light pole. I was wondering when you were going to get these. Yeah. Nice. I think they have one of my favorite sounds in the game whenever you plant one. It's a satisfying thunk. It's 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 like it's like a really good like really cool. plink a, a plink light sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whenever they flash. There's a lot of stuff. Overload my light. Can't do it. All right. Ain't got it. Ain't got the stuff. You, need, you, need you got more, plenty of clamps. You need more loot to yeah. make that. Yeah. You do have plenty of clamps. That's nice. That's good to know. <laughs> we had a while there near the end of development where we did not have enough clamps in the game. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> little little things like that. It's such a poorly balanced uh, game. So it's my not fault. poorly balanced. It was, it was just like, we'd have playthroughs of people like, I don't have any of such and such, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and kind of don't even need to do that anymore. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, let's see. Well, I could tell them about missing food, or I could repair the water processing could, or restart it. Yeah. Where is that in the map? I'm at the have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, came from power down. Yeah. The there's have. a bridge get over a gorge. A bridge over a gorge. <laughs> yeah. A, a bridge let's over. Let's do it. A I'm sure that bridge is perfectly intact and not do dangerous it. at all. No, yeah. it's not. It is perfectly intact, actually. <laughs> no joke. It really is just like right there. Don't die. We have we have falling deaths. Ooh. But that was. I'm really glad that the, that distance was not a falling death. Yeah, <laughs> the, the falling Plan death is 100 percent brutal. Design. The, the sound mm. effects. It is. Really, it's pretty it's bad. Really it sounds like somebody dropping like a, in front just, of you. A, just a hole. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of blood actually. Just. <laughs> 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 the weather picked up. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if I'm down here. Uh, okay. I can probably not that way. Probably not. I love this song. It sounds dark. It's a very dark song. <laughs> yeah. So, so the the arm, how, how much of that is like animated, and how much of it is it just you guys just sort of like wiggling it around? Uh, it's um, I I think it. There's a very light animation on it, but it's mostly a spring. Yeah. Okay. So that it's, <laughs> you know, it it doesn't look great, but. Uh, we, uh, it, it used to be completely bolted, and there was like a tank turret. Yeah, crouched. Hmm. Oh, and, I, thought, uh, I thought it had to be crouched. And we actually shot the announced, we had a final edit of the announcement trailer, and then I watched it one night and couldn't, couldn't stand how bad the arm looked when it was like bolted when you're looking around. Hmm. And so I, um, added, I added the noise to the arm and reshot all the footage, like, in a single day and like recut the whole thing because I was like, I cannot. That cannot go out, mm. um, okay. and it doesn't look great. But it, it's like it's, oh, it looks a lot better than it. Yeah, 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 it looks a lot better. It's like it's like we upgraded from like completely unshippable to like hey, nobody really notices that much, you know. Um, and like indoors, it doesn't have as much sway um, because you're not in the middle of a hellscape. Right. Yeah, you don't notice it with the hands so much, but oh, the light feels so much more natural because of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. because it has, it has both the noise, but then it's also got some sway that lags whenever you look around, mm -hmm. so yeah. it, it, you know. This is where you would, this is where you found out that um, you were not alone yeah. in the old, oh, old version of the game. All of a sudden the lights went out and you heard footsteps above you running out, and then, yeah, it was mm. cool. It was a very different experience. Yeah. We should just put the, because um, that was the end of our third playtest build, we should just put that playtest build on Dropbox and tell people that they can check it out. I mean, like, <laughs> check what, it out. Oh, God. Check out indie development. It, well, actually, it will, what, what would happen was it would absolutely decimate people's save games. Good point. <laughs> you know? Would, yeah. You'd be like, back up your save game, because this will ruin it. Can you make a condition, too, where you have to play as another character that is following in your <laughs> footsteps based on your playthrough? Yeah, it's just a, we, well, we support ghost mode playthroughs, kind of like mm -hmm. Mario Kart, so. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, you just keep doing a time loop type of <laughs> Oh, wait, so you, wait, great. you get a cart in the second playthrough? That's amazing. Yeah, it's a cart, yeah. It's a cart racer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's Ooh. New Game Plus, though, and I don't think we're going to be able to get all the way through there on this stream, but. I read Plastic Tie, and I didn't think of a zip tie. I thought of, like, 
plastic, like tie. A plastic like tie. Like a shitty plastic yeah. tie. Yeah. Well, that's, well, the up, yeah, the upgrade for your jacket is actually making a tuxedo t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's a clip-on plastic bow tie. Yeah. Uh, nope. Yeah, twist that. Right yeah, I want to hear the valve. Oh, well, Free, that would have been sound. good. That would have been a great idea. The cap blows off and the water like freezes. In Just freezes right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the things you think of when you're done making the game. Well, I mean, we could have thought of that while we were making it and been like, oh, we can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> Really, we could have got the hand animation yeah. of you taking the flashlight yeah, down totally. and putting total, your hand Total out. docking animation. Ooh, the office. There's got to be something here. All, the, always good things to be found in video game offices. Like chairs and tables. Mm-hmm. Seen if it actually affected the lights? It, well, I, yeah, I was just curious what it does. It, it? Was power. it does. Nice. Ooh. It's dirt. It's not blood. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Oh, goodness gracious. Another oh. field survival manual. <laughs> hey, that's the jacket There's one. your jacket liner. Hey. Tuxedo shirt. <laughs> so I wonder if, what do I got for this? Parker ladder. Mm. Canvas, Canvas and rope. rope. Man, you're, you gotta. I didn't see rope yet. Gotta get them crates, son. Pick it up, pick it up, find that rope. Yeah, I know. Some canvas over there. <laughs> <laughs> But it, luckily it resolves if you restart your game. Oh no. But you can, Don't tell yeah. me about my bugs in this area. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't do anything I'm to fix go it home because and it, it. it because Yeah, don't, it, don't. No, don't no, touch not that touching area. it. It uh it basically I like heated up during the conversation and so when I ended the conversation it auto saved in the two second window before you get the new Oh no. The new thing. And so if you start the game, you still have the objective that says talk to McMurdo or whatever. And report back, and then, um, and but if you go there, there's no message because the conversations already happened, so all the messages are marked as red or oh, whatever. No. And I'm like, oh my god, this is a total blocker. But then when you unuse the thing, it, it gives you the, yeah, the because it, I guess it's waiting for that to be used or whatever. I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, you know, I'd love to. If I knew the scripting, I would try well, to fix it. But you since, heard it, it since, here, since the game, yeah, since the, since the game recovers, then that is uh, that is shippable and shipped. <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, games do ship with bugs. Yes, they do. Uh, and yeah. you learned it here first, if you didn't know that. <laughs> yep. I don't think there's any plot stoppers anybody's found yet, so that's, that's, that's really the gold standard, as, long, as long as no one's ever gotten stuck when they can't play through. That's good to know. The novelist did not meet that standard in version 1.0. Oh. It did in version 1.01. <laughs> with the first patch that was yeah, released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First patch that was released. Oh, empty. Oh, that is weak. Yeah. We have a lot of empty boxes. Sad, sad. Mm. Oh, oh, oh man. Man. boy. Double bummer. Hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> you've got some nice music helping you out right now. T turn the music off. <laughs> All right. Go drive out of here in a snowcat. That's that's the way. I don't know why I'm closing all these doors. I feel like you're I'm always being responsible. responsible. I'm being yeah. very polite. I'm because like, you well, learned with yeah. that one door back, yeah. In, yeah. back in the power <laughs> building, right? Yeah. You're like, if I leave a door open and I need to heat something up. Uh, yeah. You come in that, drop the heater, nothing's happening. It's like kissing your Take sister. Take that garbage can. <laughs> no good. Come quiet all of a sudden. It cool. did get quiet. Uh, oh, I quiet and cold. You turned the power <laughs> off. I turned the power off like yeah. a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were yeah. closing the doors. So yeah, exactly. This is why we. This is why we close doors. You also got rid of your symphony, though. That's that's the worst part. <laughs> it's hooked up to the power system no, because just put it all we think of everything. Four white poles. Not yet. I think it just heard like a truck go out outside, yeah. and I was yeah, like, like a big "Who hooked area? up that bassy sound <laughs> in this area? That's weird." It's like, yeah, this is where you first realize you're not alone. Okay, so when the when the uh, garage T Rex comes out, I'm at the greenhouse. Oh my lord! All right, it's a hike. Yeah, yeah. This is this is where I mean, like the. Do you think you know where you want to yeah, go? Yeah, they need to get mm. to the comms and yeah. then go north from there. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the weather kind of lessens up a little bit here after the, that first little burst, but uh, it definitely becomes a game of like plan my path. Yeah. We definitely did. 
yeah, a lot of the signage in the game was because somebody <laughs> during a playtest said, <laughs> like, I don't know I'm, where to go right yeah, now. And we're oh like, boy. all right, sign, uh, there you are. I'm getting sleepy. You are, and you can't run anymore. You're getting cold. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Can I just douse myself in kerosene and light myself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but you can only do it once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you get an extra 30 seconds till you yeah, burn yeah. it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might make it though. Yeah. You're doing this well. Is... Ooh, that. Oh, shit. Let's just stop and reload. Yeah, let's As you said, that might not have been the best <laughs> time to reload a battery. You can sprint again. Oh, I knew these stairs were going to end nowhere. Oh, there. falling death. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that was. Well designed. Oh, by whoever breaths designed are getting that. further apart. Go on. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, you're almost there. Oh, oh I am dead. That was really close. Look, your latest yeah. save. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No longer near. Actually, it would have been great if we could have changed the, the loading screen after dying to just say yeah. death. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, that classic, you died in Dark Souls or something. Oh, right? man, there's. Thanks, Obama. That's not yours. It's a television problem. That was my okay. favorite. The the only mod I ever installed on Dark Souls on a PC <laughs> was the Thanks Obama mod. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's an exit out here, right? Wait, oh, here yes, yes, yes. Not this way. Did, did, have you already... Do you still have the quest to go to comps? I guess it wouldn't no. matter, because you can still go talk to them. Yeah, that's uh, true. From there, it doesn't matter. Uh, yep. Yeah, yep, yep, you're good. Yep. Yeah, so the game auto-saves um, whenever you are... Warm in a safe room um, every two minutes. Mm -hmm. You have two auto saves, so you never, never really lose too much. So you're actually, this is you're starting from a better position right now because you didn't turn the power off, yes. which means that right before you leave the door here, you're you're warm, right? Yeah, now. and you know where to go, and yeah. <laughs> and you're <laughs> sprinting, sprinting now, like, so yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's hey, good. you can go fine. You should just reload your bat battery to the hell of it now. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this game. I'm gonna do it yeah. and still have time left over. <laughs> Take that game. <laughs> Take that game designers who are oh, look, sitting right you next to you. You can see the radar dome in the, in the far distance. Oh, cool. Yeah, the red light's like our little, I don't know, kind of like a, a landmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a key image. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's like in the, it's on the loading thing. screen and, you know. Pretty important, like, landmark for yeah. the start of the game and everything, too. Spoiler yeah. alert, you'll be visiting it later, too. <laughs> Up close and personal. Oh Spoiler alert, if it's in the game, it's probably important <laughs> yeah, that we yeah. put it there. <laughs> yeah. Are these windows oh. busted out on top? Yes. They certainly are. But yeah, they, they weren't in the other room, in the teletype room. Though. The teletype room, you're the, good. The first one you went into? Oh, the yeah. radio room? Sorry, I should call it radio room because that's what it is in the game, but we call it the teletype yeah. room in uh, Jury Development all the time. Warm, right? There's a heater in here. Yep. Uh, I don't need to talk to this guy, do I? Nope. Um, no. Nope. In fact, you can't yeah. because we're bad. Because you know. <laughs> because. He doesn't want to talk to you right yeah. now. I'm, you know, let's just turn on all the power. Oops. Turn everything. Uh -oh. Missed this earlier. Good lord. Nice job, man. You found it. Poor, poor, poor searching skills. Yeah. I should just light these buildings on fire so I know which ones <laughs> uh, I've yeah. been to. Uh, also, make sure you have nowhere safe to uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. warm up. Well, I would just assume that it would warm everything up. Yeah, it's uh, like the end of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> That cat. Look at you making some sweet progress over yeah. this. Uh... <laughs> this is a nice stop over, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's like like once you kind of get into the meat of the game and start doing. I mean, which we're getting close to, but like once you start yeah, doing the. This is meaty. Back and forth, you kind of like learn that, like, okay, if I'm going from here to here, I can stop over here. Okay, mm -hmm. this is safe, and stuff like that. So you start to, it's you kind of gain a little bit of mastery over the base over the course of the game. Good lord. That's yeah. Cold. It, yes, and, Holy and so smokes. one of the things I wouldn't call simulated, but <laughs> it, it definitely um, is still gameplay relevant. Is that the colder it gets, the shorter you stay alive outside. Mm -hmm. So like over the course of the game, you you know once it gets to negative 100, I think you've got like 45 seconds or something like that. And that's just on this difficulty on hard and condition one. Though it's like cut in half, mm -hmm. so like condition one is like hard for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've played what through it. Yeah, what inspired you guys to put that in there? The increased difficulty. Uh, condition one, yeah. Um, yeah, because we only shipped with easy and um, easy and normal. Mm -hmm. um, basically, just like as a way, because like a lot of you know, like it's a short game. You know, it's probably mm -hmm. probably three to five hours, mm -hmm. and so part of it is just like it's a real good challenge, and you know, a lot of it too is that like. 
once you know the game, it, ca it kind of really gets interesting once the blizzard really hits. Mm. And so if you d you're just like, so those modes are basically like, okay, it just starts at the blizzard. Nope. It's like you, it, the game just starts and you're screwed. And it's just, it's just that's kind of where the heart and soul yeah, of the game rolls. is. Right. So there you go. The heart and soul of the game is like really when you're um, in horrible conditions and you're really battling and you're leaving yourself these light trails and stuff and like mm -hmm. you don't know where you're going. Um, follow that road. Yeah, follow mm -hmm. the road. Following the road is a smart idea. Oh, I love that sound. Uh oh. This one's gonna be another close one, sports fans. <laughs> <laughs> but you found the building. You found the building. Nice job. Yeah. It's not that hard with the brightness crank all the way up. <laughs> Burn! There's yeah. a big hole there. That's there is. And we, there. I was not able to Ooh. figure out how to do Manslink, so I'm a bad gamesman. Uh, if you play on the Linux platform, there's a nice Easter egg for yeah. you. Yeah, find a little buddy. A little buddy named Tux. And yeah. what about oh, Easter eggs? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really wanted to put some Dan Kaplan novels. Somewhere. That would have been good. Yeah, Should've Dan Kaplan that. is the, uh, the main character from the novelist. Uh, uh, I've turned into an ice cube. Somehow that, that screen used to go all the way to white. I don't know what broke, but it kind of looks cool whenever it does. there's an image <laughs> on the background, so as designed. Also, if I think it is time for me to transition over to you. Oh, as man. A, oh, you, you, I've been dead. You've dead died dead. twice, and now you're yeah, like, awesome, yeah. you need to. Uh, sure. <laughs> you need to step in here and, and die some as well. You guys are going to have to help me through this, I think. I haven't been right, we're all following Jeff's told, journey Totally not paid attention to yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, well I was hoping that Tucker would come in and fill in. But okay, I, you're back at comms. Okay, that's okay, good. All this stuff got picked up. So yeah, you want to you want to head back over to that garage area. Um, if you hit uh, X, you can get into your interface to take a look at your map. Mm -hmm. Also, the back button takes you directly. And the to back, your map. thank you. The back, that, that is true. Yeah, it doesn't tell you where you. Yeah, are. that's that's the interesting part. So you're at comms. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And you were trying to get to the garage, right? That's, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I bet you could sprint there just straight away. I would definitely yes. stop. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Left, left trigger. Left trigger is sprint. Um, and uh, yeah, you're definitely going to want to stop in power. But um, yeah, the, that was one of the things that like, uh, again, I know I keep saying that, but once the weather kicks up, um, this is kind of like, you've kind of completed the intro to the game and now you get into the meat of your escape plan as soon as you get to the garage and the weather gets bad as well. Um, and so the, we kind of liked quick. the map that way because you have to look at it and think about it a little bit. You're like, okay, I know I'm in yeah. this building. I'm facing this way. Okay, I think I know. And it's like realistic, like a real map doesn't have you know, well, I, mean, I guess now we have GPS, but uh -huh. um, but yeah, it, it basically is like it makes you think about your navigation, mm -hmm. um, yeah, in interesting ways. Nice, All right? So, is it not going to show me the poles that he had set up earlier? Uh, you just have to no, 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 because that was it, it's a it's it a traditional say, like yeah. your. Cool, cool. You know, just starting from that save, re, you know, rewinding in time. Sure. Uh, it's me. I'm Hello. Still, I'm still Jeff Solis. Yeah. As you can tell, same yeah. shirt. Yeah. Game is awesome. Same yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for playing. Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> All right. So I'm Welcome, in the... sir. Tucker. Welcome, Jeff. Back. Yeah, it's still me. I'm still Jeff. Notice the same shirt. <laughs> That's true. You guys are having right. I'm same in shirt. the power yeah. building now. I'm trying to get to the garage, just so, just to catch you up, Tucker. Yeah. Okay, you're trying to get to the I'm, garage? I'm in the power right now, which is in the center there. It yeah. does not normally tell you where you are. Uh, I can only read Cyrillic, so <laughs> I don't know what that says. But uh, we if can, this is in Russian, I would know. Well, we can, we can make that happen. Yes. When you play, you are welcome to turn it into Cyrillic. Yeah. In condition. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the way you want to go. Uh, there you go. That's oh, I found the found the shortcut. That's a good little hero shortcut. Nice. Yeah, that's that's good. I found that when I was doing the capture for the launch trailer. Nice. nice. Okay, this is where Jeff died <laughs> because yeah. we never you found wanted... an entrance. That's right. That's right. But you seem to have a plan. You did. Whoa. Oh, that's the. Oh, I'm gonna come back to that real quick. I need a warm up. Yeah, you do. Oh, oh. Oh, get inside. Oh, 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 no. oh, 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 o
focus, you're good. No, just keep going. Go yep. back up the steps you did before. Oh, light the or, no, fire. back to the left. You're good. You're, oh. No, no, he can't, no, get he can't there. go he there. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Get in there. <coughs> no, good. Okay, now, now, now. Go. No, no. Ignore, ignore, can't ignore. Do drop, drop down. down. Drop down. Yep. You're going to do it. Door. Right there. To, to your right. To, to your right. Oh, to your right. Behind you. Oh, my gosh. Right. You're, you're going to see no, it. No, right oh, there. I didn't see it. Okay, okay, okay. Heater, heater. D pad down. D pad down. Portable heater up. Oh, heater. Too many times. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There we go. Survived. Jesus Near Christ. death. Hence the name. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing you had the developers here with you. No, yeah. this is great, yeah. This is like, uh, better than the Nintendo hotline. It is actually. Yeah, it is. This yeah. is way better it than is. the Nintendo yeah. hotline. So now they I'm wouldn't happy. stay on the phone with you, like, telling you exactly where to go. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, they would not sit on the couch the with you. Yeah. Nintendo hotline. <laughs> um, right. So, ooh, blowtorch. Interesting. I was thinking about blowtorch. Blowtorch. Fancy. What about all those frozen doors? Start using this. Oh my goodness gracious! Don't you know? Look at that intuitive tool design. Amazing. So he picked it up and he just knew how it worked right yeah. away. It is. It is a nice intuitive tool. We we all have a lot of mental model about uh, how a torch works. It's great. Yeah, if you light it. Oh my gosh! You son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, That's one hundred percent Masson. Like imagine. You're welcome. You just got <laughs> you just got Masson, but trolling you mm -hmm. in person and <laughs> laughing at you. Like do this. I feel like that's my gaming You're experience with you anyway. Chilly. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get back in here real quick. While watching the stream, I was thinking like this game and nope. the new Doom. Like if you combine them, you just get Doom Three. Like. You guys just took different parts of Doom 3 and went different Interesting. directions. They took all the enemies and all the weapons, and you guys took the flashlight and mm -hmm. not all the enemies. And, and like the outside Mars bits where you're kind of suffocating and you only have a limited amount of time. Just like Doom that's, 3. Yeah, that's basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, speaking of Mars, like the first thing I ever wrote on this whenever I was like coming up with ideas for what to make after the novelist, mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole pitch for this was the Martian in Antarctica. Right. What? You know? Definitely just, getting that vibe. Yeah, it's just like stranded, screwed, you've got a little bit of support back home, make do with what you got, try to stay alive. Did you ever think about making this in actual space though? Because that's kind of That like would be really cool. Uh, different set of problems though. I mean, I would I would totally do that. I'm a, I'm a space nerd. So. Okay, good. Chili. Space is awesome. Space is awesome. Classic tie. Classic tie. All right, I'm going to run back here okay. real quick. Nope. Entirely independent. Savings and, you know, money from the novelist. Yeah. I eat the dumb way. <laughs> <laughs> the passionate way. Yeah, the passionate, the passionate way. way. The passionate way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, independent development isn't always glamorous, but when you do it, it's because you actually care. That's right. Yeah. There, are many, yeah. there are many, many uh, wonderful, terrible stories that always come out of that that you will always enjoy telling. Yep. Oh, um, sweet. But you also enjoy making them. Yeah, I mean, the benefit is you get to make exactly what the hell you want to make mm -hmm. without anybody ever telling you anything. Mm hmm. It just, you know, every once in a while, you'll say to yourself, oh God, why? But then you just move But then forward. you know why, because you're like, I'm not working on, well, I'm not gonna make fun <laughs> of mini games. Not to call out anything. Yeah, not to call out, you know, mm -hmm. game, oh. Not to call out yeah, second like hey. 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 Oh God, okay, not that door, not yet. It literally just came from Yeah, like you're gonna want, you're gonna want to run in that other, oh, nope, nope, this oh. is not sealed, my friend. You are, <sighs> wrong room. So, I think you had to open the, close the door over there. You have to no, seal. I was going to go back to that little open room. Up, upstairs? So wait, is Seal in this game? Like, you he have is. to find and play Kiss from a Rose? Yes. And then yes. yes. Okay. And then you find a Seal as well. Oh, cool. That Seal yeah. actually can play it's Kiss from a Rose yeah. on a tiny trumpet. Yes. Uh, awesome. You know, also if you can make a uh, a wiring bypass kit, you could go uh -huh. upstairs to repair that. Yeah. Uh, First you want to do this saw? window. Cool. You seem to want to do earlier. I do want to. Yeah. I did want to do that. So I would go into this room. Sorry. Nope. You're good. Let me see what's happening up here real quick. There's a good, so that there's power box is outside of this door? You'd have to go back no, outside. You'd have to go back outside. And climb back up the thing. Yeah, sure. Or so you can get out of this okay. area. Let's see what's over here. So you guys are both space nerds, you were saying? I mean, I like space. I like space. Space is pretty cool. I like watching NASA documentaries on Netflix. We live in space. Uh -huh. Oh shit, we're on a big, we're on a spaceship. A big spaceship right now. We are. It's on atmosphere. Spaceship That's Earth. Which is a pretty well designed uh, spaceship you got. Because you, you were saying, like, The Martian was a driving influence behind it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That, that, that would definitely be, to answer your question from a million years ago, that, that would definitely be an influence, was The Martian, for sure. <sighs> Did you ever, uh, there's a book that's kind of humorous right. and fascinating called Packing for Mars. Yes. Oh, by Mary Roach, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That mm -hmm. one's really fun, too. That's a fun book. Concur. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you like Concur? 
some flash at that time. Oh my god. Probably the game development, right? <laughs> yeah, making the game is <laughs> really difficult. Um, wow. Well, we were just talking about this earlier. Probably. At our desks. Uh, I think one of the hardest things is getting people to be aware of your game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, yeah. The market is really crowded right now. Yeah. And and I mean, making a game is hard. Oh, canvas, like, canvas, it's canvas. absolutely hard. Shipping a game nice. is hard. Um, like dealing with all of the you know the troubles that game development throws at you in the Ooh, middle, just kind of all of the unexpected things. Those are all hard too. But um, right now, it's it's great because we're getting a lot of really cool games that we would have never seen before. But we're also just getting a lot of games released, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to to get people to notice that your game exists. And that's yeah, that's, that's probably a tough yeah, thing. that's actually the hardest thing. But be, because I mean, like that's a solvable problem. I mean, there's there's 100 percent like known ways to do good PR, but it takes so much time that you don't have time for the game. So it's like, you know, we kind of knew we were doing a bad job at that and we're like, well, but we have to keep making the game because if you don't make the game, you have nothing to sell. So exactly. it's kind you kind of yeah. like know as you're doing it, this is, you know, we should be doing this other thing and yeah. you're just not, you know, so. Uh, but it's cool, like for instance, you know, what just last week was Day of the Devs. Um, with a bunch of awesome games that were featured, so it's really cool like, to, that events mm -hmm. like that exist mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to help people get the word out. It's also like a double-edged sword too, though, I guess, because like while we do Day of the Devs because we love showcasing those games, at the same time it's like look at all these other amazing yeah. games yeah. at the same time. Yep. And so even in shows like that, that spotlight you, nope. how do you stand out among them? Among them. Yeah. You stand out among them, then one of the other gay guys <laughs> there, one of the other games. Yep. Uh, you know, there's just so many. I mean, there's just so many. I mean, like, how many games do you have on your wish list, right, I, on Steam? How many games have I like, bought recently that I just haven't played? Yeah, exactly. I, it's, there's just there's just so much out there that it's like you're you know you're competing with, you know, someone else. You know, you're competing for that fifteen dollars with just a, like I'm, we're competing with our friends for that fifteen dollars. Like like yeah. you know like we're we're friends with a bunch of indie devs who are like. You know, they're supportive of us, we're supportive of them, but it's kind of like the customer is going to be like, am I going to buy Slayer Shock or am I going to buy Near Death? Am I, you know, am I going to buy the Magic Circle or am I going to buy Near Death? You know, so yep. that's just the reality of it. So, right, so I would go out that's to the a left. Hard part here. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's a fascinating problem to have because like going back to, you know, 2005, maybe around even 2010, you'd think like, Oh, indie games are great. Like there should be more. And then if you say, well, in a couple of years there will yeah. be so many it's market saturation. That, that's basically where follow the starting. app store. Yep. Yeah. Which I mean, it's a great time to be a oh, game so fan. Wrong direction. It is. It what are you trying to do right now, Asa? Uh, trying to get back up to the second story. Oh yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You know where you're. You, you've got um, it. Yeah. yeah. I just I walked around the wrong side of the yeah. building. <laughs> it's fine. You got it. Uh, Plus, you you know you're, you got that last chance. Now you know you got that safety net. Be reckless. Borderline reckless. You can be reckless with your life in Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the uh, double jump boots yet? Uh, I am getting that yet. after I get the screwball check. Did, okay. you didn't, no, that blueprint's in the water building. Right, let me just jump back <laughs> yeah. in here real quick. Get some of this going. <sighs> okay, so I've turned some power back on now. Yeah, so now, yeah, now so you're in a sealed room in the building now. You actually don't need to use your yeah, heater anymore. But you, so I would recommend sealed. sealing this room. And you got there's nice. A, there's a window there that you're going to want to. Because this, this is basically your home base for the game. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I so, get very ceiling shy because these resources are yeah, you don't, scarce. Yeah, you don't know so. if you're going to mm -hmm. be which able is, to come back. Which or, is smart. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, got to think about it. Until I know I need to keep coming back to something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is more of a thinking man's freezer. So this, <laughs> this room that you're in right now, um, and actually the whole building itself, um, ends up being the hub for the second part of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this is so kind of where This is an OK room to seal. Yeah, cool. this, this, this is like a high, high impact room to seal. So as soon as you get that door, you can go, oh. Fancy, okay. So, let's see, now that I've got power. Yep, so now you're, now you're warm and safe in here, which is nice. I feel like I got another one of those guides. Let me see what's happening here. It's really weird, like, everything about this game, the survival, the resources. Oh, they're crafting? They're under the crafting tab. Oh, right, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Like all, oh, God. sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I was gonna say, all of those you things are things you would associate with horror games or scary games. Yeah, the scary games with jump scares and all of that. And like, you guys do a really good job of making it tense. And like, a lot of other games, they would go for that like jump scare in addition right. to making it tense. But then you realize like, if you remove all of that horror aspect, you get just like this really intense, like not exactly nerve wracking, but like just a game where there's, 
it's always a high tense situation mm -hmm. and you're thinking a lot more because when it gets to a scary part then it's more reactionary but if you remove all the scary elements then it's all about like thinking things through mm -hmm. and yeah. then, like taking the risk and seeing if like okay yeah. if we go out there and do this and get back in time uh, that creates a different kind of tension without having that same kind of fear well thank horror. you yeah Cool. The, and the thing I really That's like about nice it, way of putting it, yeah. And the thing I like about it too is that it all comes from player actions and player stories because, like, this is just it's just systems, you know. Like, I freeze yeah. at this rate, doors work this way. I've got these resources, and so like, right. if you, here. you know, if you don't heat up enough before you head out to, you know, um, there's a teletype in the other room downstairs, which is what'll help, yeah, you that'll help you in the next sealed room. Yeah. Um, gotcha. Like, like if you if you, um, oh, this guy, yeah. you know, if if you leave unprepared and get halfway out and then you know, almost die and have to scramble back and stuff, and you have that tense moment of barely making back to the building, you're like, oh, I did that, I know why that happened to me. It wasn't yeah. a canned jump scare, you're like, oh crap, okay, when I do it again, okay, let me warm up first. Yeah. You know, so it's, it feels like it's your own doing, it just feels like you're there, and, and that's kind of, that's the kind of things we were going for, instead of making it about meters and menus and, you know, <laughs> deep crafting and stuff like that, it's just like, uh, I feel, you know, I just feel <laughs> cold, you know? Yeah. Sarcasm warms me. I like that line. <laughs> oh, Danny's yeah. so good. One of my favorite things about the teletype is the pauses. Mm -hmm. There's like a little notation yeah. when Danny writes that you can put these delays in the text so that you can be like, the person's thinking or the person's like dot, 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 you know? Uh -huh. It gives it a little bit of personality as opposed to just blasting out everything at the same. Yeah. You know? It is a really cool thing you okay, see in thing. games more recently I think like like having the dialogue be timed appropriately because mm -hmm. uh, you see it in a lot of movies that try to show like like typing or or text messages where they'll use like the dots to show the delay but that you know someone's writing so that way you can mm -hmm. see somebody reacting to wondering what they're writing um, right they did that like a very yeah. modern thing yep I li I've, li I've enjoyed seeing that more recently in movies because I think they've done a good job of that yeah House of Cards did that actually I think uh, yeah House of Cards did it really well oh yeah they had those scenes. overlays yeah I don't know if they did timing. It's it and they but they showed the typing and it's like that nice anticipation uh -huh. of and, and you, you, it feels a lot more naturalistic like that. Like you're you know when you talk to somebody, there are those pauses. Yeah, and that's that's really cool. And it's, it's a nice way to represent people. It's weird that like text is is starting to have that same kind of human element to it too. I think Mr. Robot does a lot of that. Yeah, uh, showing text yeah. messages as well. Yep. Um, and then the movie Chef. I don't know if it showed. Text, oh yeah, yeah. But it showed all the tweets. The tweets. Yeah, yeah. I have like seen those. Oh, it's Chef really is awesome. Yeah. You should definitely see it. It's really it's good. A, it's John Favreau directed it. Yeah, I think it's on okay. Netflix. Cool. Oh, yeah. That'd be it's fun. very good. I will check that it, out. Especially because it is, like, transparently a metaphor for... Oh. Oh, that wind's kicking up. You gotta... Oh, oh man. Shit. You gotta mash that button to close mash it. Mash that button. QTE time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had no uh, this is that kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> man. Uh, Chef is, like, transparently about being a creative individual in a in a commercial sense. Oh cool. Um, so like he you know oh, he's weird parallels. Yeah, so so <laughs> like it, it it feels like he's using it as a thin metaphor for like maybe Oops. some experience he had on the Iron Man movies or like I don't know the oh. backstory of it, but it definitely is very much like because he strikes out on his own, he was a high profile chef, he starts his own food truck, stuff like that. Um, but it's it's a it's a great movie about the creative process actually. Yeah. And a guy who doesn't really understand Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's really cool to see like, like for a while people were trying to figure out the language of how do we show this kind of like modern text. Uh, sure. Yeah, this is this is this is the like what we've been talking about. Once the game kicks up, like you're you're now officially in the like I'm in a wasteland and right. I'm freezing really fast. Oh Holy God. crap! Where am I gonna go? This is this is where the game kind of lives for the rest of the I game. I see so something kind of there. I want to go. Oh, look! Oh, it's oh, so shit. perfectly placed, just at the edge of your coldness. <laughs> The Edge of Your Coldness. Oh, no. That was the name of my high school band's first album. <laughs> I thought it was the band. <laughs> was it, it was, was self-titled, self yeah. 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 Get in there. We are the Edge of the Coldness. Thank you. This is our first song, oh, Frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, oh shit. My it's getting too much. Oh, God. Yeah, that was like, I hate no. QTEs. <laughs> Survived. I, I hate QTEs in games. I think they're awful. But that that one to me is not a QTE. It's because it like it's visceral. You're like right. so scared. Uh -huh. Close the door. You know, like, you're, like it's kind of like it's a natural 
it feels satisfying, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not a button combo. And also, is that the only time you do that in the game? Only time that there's anything like that is just the force closing the doors whenever, it, it only happens in high winds. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like situations like this. Do you know where you are? Uh, I feel like I'm in that far right yeah. little house. I think, I think you're about right. Yeah, yeah. so the you can just curve house. around and go down <laughs> yeah. into the water. It, you, will, you will make yourself very happy if you drop yourself a rope trail on your way. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how long do these stretch out for? You just have to, uh, it's all I automatic. Yeah, you'll, you'll keep placing it yeah. automatically as cool. you go. It is a beautifully designed tool. <laughs> good, good job. Be, be, well, well done. I, I will say that because I spent a lot of time, hundreds of hours making this work. Yeah. And I abs and like towards like I think maybe alpha people weren't using them and they they, they weren't people weren't understanding the utility of them. Uh huh. Um, Oop, and I was I was enough. like I was like. We could cut them, but I was like, I have sunk so much time yeah. into making those rope physics and like every, you know, <laughs> I, I, making it connect to your hand and making it work in all the different contexts where you can, ext you know, extend existing trails and all sorts of stuff like that. I was God, like, not again. Hell no. Oh, uh, here you go. This might be. I can't. You can do oh, it. God. You can do it. Link? Do you have it? Maybe up, up, above. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, you didn't, didn't yeah, you, even you give me the, the moment of clarity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that has to recharge. Like you have to have like two minutes. Yeah. It's totally hidden. Gotcha. Sorry. Got you. Yeah. Nice try though. You, you, probably right, really close. you probably have an auto save in the hut. Uh, uh, to, to the question that somebody asked earlier about, um, uh, you know, what are the what is the hardest thing of indie development? I mean, that's kind of a broad one about developing games. But like for I think for our game, one of the hardest things we had was. How did we continue? Like, how do we keep rope pulls in the game? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because like you said, they were. There was a point where we were like, uh, nobody's using them. Is it worth continuing to invest the time in them? And that's a kind of a hard trade-off to know. Like, should I, should I keep working on something in the event that I can make it good? Right. Or should I ditch it and make everything else good, or not everything else, but right. like, spend that time on something else? And this was one that like we did, we did spend a little bit of time sitting down and be like. What's the right answer? We don't really yeah. know. And I, I like what we did here because we've gotten a lot of good feedback from people after playing the game where they're like, oh, wow, you know, and as soon as I really learned the value of rope trails, that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was really, that was a great, great feedback to Cause, get. Yeah, because they, they both help you find your way when you're returning somewhere, and they also, um, the wind doesn't blow you around when you're on one. Yeah. Um, so you can move faster and you also know where you're going. Mm -hmm. But it, that was kind of like a key moment in the project because, um, we developed all these systems. Like, there's this dynamic weather system that has different amounts of snow and wind and different cold levels and, you know, stuff like that. And then, like, the temperature can change and all these other things. And then we had these tools that were designed on paper to be like, okay, rope trails help you in high winds so you can, you know, um, not get blown around. Light poles help you in dark areas because you can see a path. And, you know, we had, like, all these reasons why this stuff worked on paper. And then we weren't creating the weather situations where the player felt the need to have them. So it was like, we have all these cool tools and we never made the weather bad. Like the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the weather was kind of like... The weather was all really easy. It was kind of like the, how, how, how it is at the beginning of the game throughout, throughout the, the, the whole game. And we're like, we've done all this work and like, it was like the simple thing is just like, make the weather really bad. Like, and that just solved it. Like, it was just like, <laughs> all these tools, we were right about how and why they worked. And uh -huh. then we just missed that last step of like, okay, let's actually put you in a, it's, you know, it's like, Interesting. it's like perfectly tuning the Mario jump and then not putting any turtles in. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and people are like, shit. no, there's no reason to jump in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, oh, just drop some turtles. Oh, okay. put those gloves that raises, on? A, no. uh, that raises a very interesting question of nice like, gloves. like, what came first, Mario's jump or the enemies that you jump on? Mario's like, jump. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. I mean, he would jump in initially. But like, for things like that, like, how do you think about that? Clearly you thought about it in terms of, we make the tools first, then it's like, okay, like, now let's create interesting situations where using right, that tool feels good this. or feels useful. But then, like, I'm sure Fine a lot of other people, pants. they might approach the same problem with, like, okay, let's create all these, like, really That's crazy situations with the player to experience this. Yeah. And then, like, okay, now how do we help them solve that? It's it's very, uh, this is this is going to sting. This is going to sting, my friend. Sorry, Asa. No, oh, it's okay. Apologies is, in advance. You're, you're getting bummered You're right going to get the worst message in the game. Generator mm. offline. Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct response, by the way. Oh yeah. It's okay. You're not. They're yeah, not it's wrong. Okay. Uh, we are. So that. one of the optional goals you got you got was to repair the orange generator as well. Mm. Yeah. You, it's kind of Jeff like, was playing that earlier. Yeah. You can blame him for not passing that message. Yeah, exactly. On you. Yeah. Yeah. Thing Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. 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 If you're, so if you're doing a stream and you you know not paying 100 percent attention, then yeah, it's yeah. It's, a, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. But, but you, you know can still what? do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like yeah, and lots of players. Do that. do that, yeah. And they come, and it's exactly. like, and it's kind of cool because like now this is just a different experience. Like this building's harder because right. you don't have, you know, you've got to, you know, worry more about he, you know, 
heating and sealing. Sure. But, you know, you'll still survive. God, this song in this uh, building is so good. ASC did a really good job on the soundtrack. Yeah. I'm going to keep plugging that because yeah. he did, he's awesome. He's yeah, this is a phenomenal soundtrack. Great artist, made a really, really good soundtrack. Yeah. And you can, uh, if you if you buy the game at Humble or Steam, there's the uh, option to get a discount on the game and the um, and the soundtrack and get because the, oh, the game's 14.99, soundtrack's like 7.99. So you can get them both for 19.99 together, the soundtrack yes. bundle. So, give that a look. Oh. Ten. What's considered indie? Oh, oh, oh! Don't even go there. That's a yeah. That's a oh my. That's a thorny question. Um, it's a lot I, of discussion. I, I think. I think. Um, oh, no. I mean, it's, it, honestly, there isn't. There isn't one answer. I. I, I don't think. Like, oh, it means well, different Tucker. things to different people, and there's many well. different reasons. Like for for us, this game was self-funded. Yeah, that that I mean, to me is a big very one. independent, right? That's like, that's a big one. We didn't have any funding, um, but. Even people who get funding oh, can still be independent. I think that's okay yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, I think, I think Time if you, die. if you kind of make an analogy, basically similar to, um, oh, nice, dude, that that was strong. That was a pro move. That was strong. You're a professional. He was about to die. Portable yep. heater. Is the sealed? Portable yep. heater. Oh Whoa. yeah, man, oh. making those effects. Every time I see that, making those effects <laughs> fade back, I am just so I'm pleased as punch because that was so buggy for so long. All right, let's um, go investigate that. But if you if you think about like the Hollywood model, essentially, it's like. Are you financed and produced by a major studio or not? You know, like, and I think that's pretty similar to because, like, a developer who does a Kickstarter, I would consider that still indie because, like, you're taking, you're using, you know, alternative funding. You're, you're still not like EA is not funding you. You know, like, there's not a, a publisher oh, writing your checks. Warm up um, again. So, that I, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I, I don't. I certainly don't think that it um, has anything to do with genre. Or um, aesthetic, or no. mechanics, or anything else like that. Like I, you know, I don't think that's really anything to do with it. I, I, I think it's yeah, primarily like funding and how it's getting made. It's like you know, we made this in our apartment. You put the heater right under you. That was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, you can you can actually do heater jumping to Pop get to a place you're not supposed it. to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's how you now speed run the game. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're just wasting. Right. Now you're. you're, you're oh, 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 you're good. You got your tank. I wanted to check out this other door real quick because I feel dog. like there was one that I didn't open. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, yeah, there, there might are, be goodies, too. There are possibly several doors that you yeah. have. Yeah. But I like how you put the tank in a safe area. That's yep. nice. That's good. Asif is a good game player. Good gamesman. I'm a scared game player. <laughs> Maybe it's the same thing. Oh, man, that yeah. weather sounds bad outside, guys. That's some, that's some I wind. feel like I'm about to see the T-Rex on the other side of the store. <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> <up in> babies. <laughs> yeah. playing Dino Crisis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, we didn't get that license either. <laughs> uh, yeah. We really tried, but, you know. Okay. So I'm cool here. There's another Don't one of these. Don't Look do that. it again. You, Is that going to happen again? Once. You no, made a mistake it, once. This whole, so basically, the <laughs> generators thing power entire buildings. The, yeah, gotcha. the, generator, the, the generators that in the power building power mm -hmm. different buildings. Um, each one powers just a few buildings. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, there's one that is currently mm -hmm. unrepaired that is not powering. It powers this and another building you go to later. So it's still worth doing. It is worth doing. Plus, you get an achievement. Everybody likes achievements. <laughs> Everybody's got achievements. Get them Chivos. I guess based on the uh, the the story change that we made to the game, this building also had some content cut from it. Like there, the experience in this building was different oh in the previous in the, in the other version. What was it in the old version? Uh, Did you actually repair you, the water? You had to repair the water. Oh yeah, yeah. And now you're just looking for yeah. a particular item. It wasn't a rug pull. Yeah, exactly. The rug pull that it is now. Yeah. Go there. You don't actually do anything there. We just want to blow you off the bridge. Oh sure. <laughs> Which uh, will uh, will Armstrong. Who's a um, guy we worked with on Bio Two? He worked on Campus Santa on uh, Firewatch, Firewatch yeah. mm -hmm. and is now at Unity. He made a really, really great, like a really astute um, point when he was uh, giving us feedback on the game, which was like a totally valid criticism. Which is so we talk all this stuff about like, hey, you know, seal rooms and leave yourself these trails, and you know, because you know you'll you'll retrace your steps and these light poles and rope trails will be helpful to you and this that, and the other. Mm. And he made this great point where he's like, okay, so early on in the game, when you go to the water building and the bridge blows out, um, you're telling me I can't trust the game's objectives. You're saying that, like, you know, you might be pulling the rug out or you might be sending me somewhere just for a story moment. And so now I don't believe you that I'll ever, you know, retrace the steps that you tell me to or that, 
you know, it's going to be valuable to me to track that kind of thing because I don't trust, I feel like it's like an unreliable narrator kind oh, of thing. Right. Um, and that's totally fair. Like, I, I, I didn't realize that, and I thought it was just a really astute point. It is a good point. And it's like, and it's like we can't sit here and tell you, we can't sit here and say, okay, it only happens that once, you know, because oh, we're, we're both, you know, you can't ship the developer with the game, and um, you also, that ruins the suspense that it could happen again, you know? Which is why you have to expect that T-Rex anytime now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I expect that in every game, actually. It's smart. It's just good to be prepared. Ooh. All right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, just, no. just there? Uh, or showing the game there? Showing the game. No, we never showed the game there. No. It wasn't announced last year, and it was out this year. I have very bad timing with that kind of thing. <laughs> like, the novelist was the same way. Like, it was kind of like never announced in any meaningful period where it could have done those things. I did go to Day of the Devs this year for the first time. It was really cool. It was a really fun event. That's what's, uh, what that reminds me of when you guys talking about the whole marketing issue earlier is uh, like one thing I hear about from some of my friends who shoot film is like a lot of times when you're thinking about schedules, uh, whether they're animating a film or shooting a film live, is like when festivals are. You're right. And, like they work backwards from their timeline. And mm -hmm. It's like, okay, try to so we have to be done by here, yeah. submissions yeah. by then, which means we have to have all of this done by this time. Uh, and I think that's kind of becoming more of a thing for games somewhere. Yeah. Like you can do a lot of online marketing for games. There's so many storefronts you can just get it into. Yeah. Um, but festivals are like another thing that, you know, if you don't cold, announce cold. and release your game between festivals, you right. can get it exposure there. Yeah, I mean, it's, and I'm sure it's this way in the indie world as well, but like, it, it's not like, um, it's not like we didn't know that we should be doing the PR. We didn't know there were festivals. And we didn't know there was, right. you know, the indie mega booth and this and the other. It's more oh, like no. oh, God. the, you know, like, you know, part of some other places. Out part of part of part of the indie too. thing is, um, yeah, I think if you go through that door, you'll be safe. This one here. Yeah, this goes back to the main atrium. As long as the doors are closed leading into here. If you uh, cool, you should be able to just down. drop it. Yes. There you go. You're good. Um, is like you know, making this living off savings and you know whatever money is the novelist is bringing in, like. Right. Um, we, it's, it's just, it's like, yeah, I know we should do that. And it's like, you know, our money runs out on this date. And if we take this week off or do that, or do, it's like, we, then we can't finish the game. And it's just like, right. we know we should, and there's realities that we can't, and we'll just do the best we can, you know? And we still slept our schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, well, you know, video games, right? Yeah, that's so, a yeah. part of, like, uh, just video games. So. Yeah, exactly. And we didn't do it too badly. I, I, I think Ken did a really good job at putting together, a, like, a production plan for the entire thing as we were working on it and, um, and keeping us to that as well. I did. Um, yeah, you did, yeah. It was, okay, it was cool. Good. <laughs> uh, and that, I mean, that's really valuable because I think, I think it's really easy to fall into a trap, especially as an independent developer, of saying like, well, it's just me, you know, yeah, maybe I do have some financial constraints I have to work within, but to um, to be able to say, well, I'm gonna spend, you know, there's just this little bit of extra time, kind of keep pushing that out, keep pushing that out. Yeah, um, without a publisher there. Yeah, yeah. Without, without somebody else there who's like trying to keep you on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one thing Tim always says is like, the miracle is just the thing getting made, period. <laughs> That's always uh, amazing to him. Uh, and so, I feel like very, very few people I've ever heard about have done it on time within schedule and everything like going according to plan. Yeah, it's um, hard to do that. And it, it's it's very tough for everyone. Like universally, they'll say that the better plan you have, the closer to it you can yeah. get. Yeah, uh, and so planning is extremely important, but uh, you know, it changes. <laughs> Just do that. Uh, and, and it's also like, I mean, there's definitely stuff you can do. Like one of the one of the easiest tricks that we didn't do, but one of the easiest tricks you can do with stuff like that is just. It's just build in buffer time. Like, yeah. like yeah. it's like, okay, cool. I know I can do this task in a week. Then put it in the schedule for a week and a half because something will happen. Yes. You know, like yeah. like like some people just add a certain like there are some producers, oh there's your rope trail. Yep. Just walk to it. Oh now you can now you can walk a lot better. Uh, um, really and that buffer saying. time is important for a lot of like the buffer time isn't, you know, even for like, oh, there's a really bad bug I have to fix. It's oh, you know, like my, my cat got sick and I have to take it to the vet a couple of times. Or, you right. know, it's like, there's so many things that happen that we don't anticipate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any of that buffer time, you're just, yeah. it's over. Yeah, you that's a part of any schedule. responsible schedule. Absolutely, too. Exactly. yeah. I mean, some, there's some producers who just will only book four days a week. That's just their, you know, rule of thumb. Uh -huh. Just like, that, because that, that immediately gives you that 20% oh buffer. Oh my God, if you I regret. Easier. 
Yeah. If you crouch and get to that rope trail. Cool. Let me get back in here yeah. real quick. Alternatively, you could go out and just make a rope trail. That's what I was gonna yeah. try and do. Okay. Yeah. Smart guy again. Good exactly. game player. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, this is where this is where the tools and everything this is what we're talking about of like, okay, let's make the weather so bad and let's make the wind push you so bad and mm. like that was actually why we specifically why we we did the rope trails coming out this way mm -hmm. was to get you to like see them and hopefully start to play with them a little bit, yeah. right. knowing that on the way back it was going to be a pretty important <laughs> thing for you. Yeah, oh, man. Every should I be crouching while I'm doing the rope? You can. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That'll help out with the with the. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about you. You can plant them, but you don't have to. They basically have a ma maximum length, and they will auto right. plant. I like that feature a lot. That's yeah, I'm, letting I'm, you just I'm run glad out. you do because, uh, <laughs> God, this. I mean, this was de probably the hardest feature in the game to. It's funny because it. Reminds hey, look! Me, you got the achievement right. for play. I, I was like, I was like, damn it! If people won't use them, I'll give you an achievement All for right. placing something. Sweet. Yeah. It's funny because so, just... we have a problem exactly like this, uh, very similar in uh, one of the games we're working on, which is rope that is attached to something that can move around. Yeah, attached to the player, also attached to the world, detached from the player. Uh huh. Yeah. I'll, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. It's just a. Uh, it's not physics. Nope. It's, <laughs> no. Actual ice that when it gets hot enough. It no. No. We, we had to cut that. Um, uh, yes. It is a blend shape. Basically, there's a. Um, and an opacity mask over it. Yeah. There's there's two things. There's an opacity mask and a blend shape. And then the uh, the blowtorch has a sphere cast. And so like it basically when you're using it, it's just casting out from the camera. And if the you know if it's hitting one of those, then there's basically a timer um, over. I think it's like five seconds that just takes the blend shape from zero to one or and then I think that it takes the opacity from like a hundred to zero. Like there's a bunch of like um, custom code for like so um, the inside of buildings as well, you, I, it's it's kind of a subtle effect, but I, I think it's one that like even if you don't notice it, you kind of subconsciously notice it. Um, inside buildings, um, the walls will get frosty or not, depending on if the room is cold or not. So if you leave a room open you'll see the doors and the um, and the wallpaper and everything um, like start to turn oh, no. uh, frosted over and stuff like that. Um, and then if you, oh, nice, <laughs> going the hard way. I like yeah, it. going the hard so way. Stressful. And then if you if you if you thaw it out, the colors will get richer and it'll all thaw back away. And it goes back and forth. And that temperature actually moves from room to room. So like as the rooms get unsealed, it's like a full simulation. Like this room right here, for example, <laughs> it's open, and so you see there's like oh, kind yeah. of. And then if you stay in here long enough, um, that will all, will the walls will unfrost. Yeah. The doors, That's a nice tell. yeah, the, the doors always show the coldest temperature it's, right. that the door is touching. So like if you're in a warm room and you see a door that's got frost on it, that means on the other side of it, it's not safe. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there's lots, so you see how like gray and kind of cold it is in here? Right. And then if you just hang out for a little bit, I mean, I'm not saying just like sit still. Oh, watch, yeah, but, yeah. But like over time, like if you'd like have this conversation on the teletype, for example, mm -hmm. um, You'll come back in there and it'll be like nice and you know thawed out basically. Oh man! There you go. Nice, nice. work. Nice. This okay. game is awesome, you guys. You, uh, okay, don't need to do that. All right. Do you have any plan on No. How to compete? <laughs> so we, if, I, if I did, I, I, if that per, if they've got ideas, yeah, we should we, repeat the questions because I don't think that they can actually hear. Oh, it. okay. Uh, the question was, do we have a plan on how to compete with other survival games in the market? Um, and that's actually really a funny question because we specifically set up not to compete with other survival right. games on the market. Um, and it wasn't really until we released and started getting feedback from people who really liked survival games and said things like. Oh, I really like this game because it isn't like a typical survival game. Like it's it is just so narrow and focused yeah. on one particular kind of survival that we were like, oh, well, that's really that's a good way of phrasing it. Like that's really neat. Yeah. Um, the, but yeah, no, the answer is like no, it's actually the survival game market is is super sad packed right now. Really and there's packed. a lot of great games. And th and that's really part of ones. that's part of the reason why like I, you know, I was mentioning that like the first 3 months I made like a really hyper simulated prototype um, and I threw it away because at that time, um, the Long Dark had already been out for like six months. And I was like, okay, they're a snowy survival game that's already out and they've got a big team and everything. Um, you got you have to look away from it, I think you might have. Oh, yeah, gotcha. if, if you, um, that's a little bit of a crappy feature. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a good feature in some ways, but like if, when you force close a door, mm -hmm. it will not be frobable unless you look away from it and come back because otherwise people would be mashing it. Yeah. And right. then as soon as they're gonna close, it would open it back sure, up. Sure. Which was a real butt stab. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> 
So, uh, but yeah, so we decided not to compete with those, um, and that's why we focused on, you know, the, uh, one of the PR people we worked with came up with a good way of putting it was, it's not a survival game, it's a game about surviving. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, that, it is just like, don't freeze, is like, that's the only point of the game. And it's just very visceral, it's moment to moment, as you can see, like, you've got 60 seconds, you know? Um, so it's not about, you know, survival games are very much about long-term management, like, okay, Okay, I've got enough calories to last 10 minutes. Okay, now I've got to get warm. Oh, night is coming. I've got to make sure to get my fire. Let me collect the wood, blah, blah, blah. And that's all cool, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I like the longer. I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those kind of games, but um, it's just a totally different model. You know, you're doing a lot of long-term strategic planning. You're doing a lot of stuff in menus. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. That's, that's a good prank. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing prank a lot of yourself. stuff in menus, and it's, um, it's just a different experience. We wanted something that's just, like, you always or like, I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm about to die, I'm about uh -huh. to die, you know? I'm um, just something very visceral and moment to moment. Uh, I don't even know if that so really I just need to get question. my bearings back for heading back there to comms. Go. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. A little reminder on Rope Trails, like, hey. Yeah. Hey, look, and also a poster right beside the door. <laughs> Rope Trails will save your life. <laughs> Is it all the little channels? You gotta right. use all the little channels. <laughs> Water to the left. Yeah, you want it. So you want to. Yeah, you're gonna want to just follow that road trail there. Gotcha. And basically, yeah, this is your home base for the rest of the game. And the snowcat is sort of like your. Um, over time, as you can tell, there's spots for other things to go on. So like, mm, this is your, mm -hmm. this is your escape. And so it's kind of like a visual indicator of your progress. Like gotcha. by the end, you've got like a bunch of stuff bolted to, and you're like, yeah, this is my ride. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm good. So that's yeah. that's that's kind of how you get out of the. That's how you eventually escape. Yeah, that's super Martian-y. Right. Yeah. Super what? Martian E. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Just outfitting the rover. Uh -huh. Yep. Cool. That was definitely inspiration for that too. For sure. Let's, let's stop here real quick. Make sure I get on the right side of the door. <laughs> it does actually. Yeah, it's, it's a little forgiving when you're inside, but yeah, you Ooh. you you found the unfortunate angle on that last one. <laughs> uh, I still don't have a solder for this. Okay, it's interesting. What'd you say? The park aligner. I'm still missing one for one uh, of those. Yeah. Oh. Where, where is that one? Uh, the park aligner is definitely one I would. I mean, th that will help you a lot. Mm -hmm. that, that's a that one, and the um, the other one is the pants. Where are the pants? Yeah, yeah, the pants is is the, one is the unknown is the unknown pants. pants. Where is it? <laughs> you just been not wearing pants. I've died the whole time. Yeah. Oh no wonder you're freezing to death. Um, is it comfortable? I don't think there's one there. Let's take a quick look here. I'm in that was, little house. There wasn't one in water. Found the one in greenhouse. Go down. The Found the one in hab. Did not there find. Was, no, I didn't find the. Um, water, water, water. Where was the one in water? It might have been there. Uh, in the where you dropped. Power. Ooh. Oh no, that's the boat torch one. I think. Sorry. That way. This is really crazy because like okay, yeah, yeah, that would, that would be being trained in games, which are all about like the visceral experience oh, whoops, or like one. creating a lot of of really Back. specific moments of fear, mm -hmm. like. It's taken a, a little oh, bit no. of watching this to realize, like, you know what? Like, you're actually totally alone out here. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's what this feels like. And if yep. you die, like, there's no there's no enemies or friendlies or anybody. It's all about actually surviving this you weird are. darkness that's totally Just terrifying. the environment. Yep. Just the weather. Just you and the storm. Yep. And, like, a big chunk of it, though, is, like, you have to, like, commit to this long enough to undo that training you get from literally every other game that's existed. Yeah. Because video games train you in a certain language that... Uh, I wouldn't say is consistent, but that mm -hmm. they follow a lot, they, they do a lot of the same tricks. And so over time, you kind of learn a language that's common to a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So this game like does it a, a very unique thing where it's not about an enemy for fear, like we were saying earlier. It's right. about, uh, about just staying tense, about the actual staying alive. Um, and once you realize like fully that like this is what this game is, you start to like really get into that, but you have to unlearn some of that other yeah, stuff first. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely doesn't really have a, a genre. Yeah. You know? Oh, nice, good call. It's good like call. it's like Oops. survival, but if you were watching it in a foreign film, you know, like, <laughs> like most of the survival <laughs> what we get are like American films. Like they're very on the nose, uh, they're very in your face, and they're very direct, but like this has, not I wouldn't say exactly subtleties, but it does it with a different tone than you would get from almost any other game. This, this, this game has subtleties. It's like a, this, yeah. This, 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 game, this game puts the B in subtle. <laughs> it's got some new I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. This game, I don't know really how to interpret that, but it's an interesting chair of phrase. 
puts the B in subtle. It's the B in subtle. It's, you don't it's, it's, not, it's not there? Well, because it's a silent B, yeah. and that <laughs> is the definition of subtle. That's more, that's, it's like subtle, it, yeah, that, I still don't know how to interpret that very well. It's, it's it You broke my brain, I think. <laughs> it, it means it's extremely subtle. It's so subtle it's non-existent. Yeah. Uh, subtle. I always say subtle. Subtle? And no, I don't. Like, I don't. Like herbs. Uh, yeah, like herbs. Sub subtle herbs. Mm -hmm. Subtle snake. Oh, wow. the thing has an outline. It's important. Yeah, that, that, yeah <laughs> that, that's like our one Ooh, little we, nod yeah. to... Well, video game. To oh, like, oops. you know... Wait, has this been a video game the whole time? Oh. Oh, wait a second. Wiring is so good. Solder is so good. Solder. Oh, hey, solder. now I got some. Solder is great. Yeah. It's subtle. It's like, yeah. Subtle now, soldering. Should we should, we, we should, we should, we should, uh, nice. That, this is a good one too. It just melts, all the, the doors melt faster. Sure. It is sure. highly appreciated. But what if you need the blowtorch safety? To torch zombies? Well, faster. or just, no, you're, you're, no, you're, alone. you're going, you're going all out right now. Your, your caution has been thrown to the wind. Oh, wait, whoops. And then, so, so this is an example of another like thing that is sort of a little bit intentionally frustrating. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can't be carrying something and then also right. search stuff, it makes you think like it, the, it would, and we made one concession, like you can open doors when you're holding stuff because mm -hmm. that got, you just open so many doors mm -hmm. that like that was a little bit too frustrating. But um, just that idea that like uh, you have to be thinking about, I'm carrying this physical thing, I've got to put it down, do this, pick it back up. Like it just gives you an extra rhythm of interaction. And it's not even that it's quote unquote fun or enjoyable to have to worry about dropping something and picking it back up, but right. it, it just makes you, it binds you to the place a little bit. You're, you're, you're just thinking like, it's just an extra thing to think about that makes it feel a little bit more realistic and a little, little bit more physical mm -hmm. um, at the expense of like being a little bit, I don't even say frustrating, but just, you know. It's just part of the rules of the game. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's like when you plan, you know, you have to know the rules thoroughly, and you're like, okay, if I do this, I'm gonna oh, do that. Oh, go, left, go left, go left, go left, don't go left, don't take it there. Yeah, go to no. power. Yeah, yeah. yeah you want to power? Oh, hang on. One sec. Let me just get back in here real quick. I need to. Uh, I think you can make it to power. You're, you're good. Reassess my uh, my plan here. That that's gonna repair the final generator. That's the yeah. item. That's the item you're looking for. To Which also gives you that hot hot chief. <laughs> And you can open doors while carrying stuff, so you don't have to drop it to go out. I can, to, I can even do the door yeah, mashing you, thing. Yeah, no. you, the door mashing yeah, thing you, can, you have to yes, drop. Yeah. You have to drop for the door mashing. Good, get in there. Yeah, so that compass, by the way, was like, um, this is a good example of indie life, actually. Um, <laughs> we were, for the, long, for, for, for the longest time, we were like, God, it'd be so good to have a compass. And we had this thing where it'd be like a player tool where you have to like pick it up and hold it in your hand. And we had such limited, you know, our part, our artist was only part time, so we had really limited resources. Um, and we were just, it kept being this thing, oh, God, we'd love to do it, but boy, we just don't have the resources, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And then one day Ryan was just like, you can just put it on the map screen, 2D. <laughs> and I was like, how on earth did it take us three months of having this feature we thought we could never do and no one just said that? It's like, when, it's like as soon as you think of it, you're like, that, oh, that makes exactly. perfect sense. Uh, that's not worth closing because oh, the, the the roof is exposed anyways. Gotcha. But that there you go. So you're like shit. <laughs> so you can use that thing to repair this final generator here. Yeah. Gotcha. But it's just one of those things. It's oh, like oh. But is there right. a place to apply it or is it? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh, right. there you go. There we go. So close. So close. Good so job. Close. Um, that's it. Repair. Does the whole game take place at night? Yes. This is polar night. So right. in Antarctica, it's basically. Six months of uh, day and six months of night. Um, it's not technically that way. There's actually kind of sunsetty periods between them, so it's closer to four and four. Um, but yes, this is in the night. This, this is in polar night. This is the dead of just you're totally screwed. The sun never comes up, um, which is which is a very extremely dangerous time. Um, you know, I uh, when I talked to some of the guys who oh, I talked no. to who worked in Antarctica when I was interviewing. Um, they talk about the difficulty, like the, the people's brains basically break when they spend oh, six months in darkness in Antarctica because you oh. were so cut off from everything. Um, basically, what, one of the guys I talked to, so he worked at the South Pole Station, which is like the remotest of the remote. Um, and, uh, ooh, if you just close the other door, you don't need to use your heater because this building's powered. Actually, right. watch this. You're warming up right now? Yeah, you're warming cool. up right now, nice. and this snow will slowly uh, melt. Uh, That's awesome. Including oh, on the best. doors, yeah, oh, it's really? much, it's much better. Yeah, 
Um, so that's another thing that like um, with the temperature simulation, um, it will basically thaw out. And this is something we that's a really underutilized thing in the game that we never trained and we should have done more of, but yeah. you know. But um, the, this, the, the snow will slowly thaw in here and then um, there's a container in the corner that you can't get to, but, but once, it, uh, once it thaws, you can actually search the container. So it's actually like worthwhile to um, let stuff thaw out. Um, Interesting. But what was I saying about it? Oh yeah, um, one of the guys who works at South Pole Station, he said basically for every month you spend down there, once you get back to the real world, it takes you a month to become normal again. So like if you're down there for six months, you're not right again until you've been in the, back in the world for six months. Um, and you can read you can read stuff about it's called T three syndrome. Um, T three T three is some I forget what it is. It's like a brain chemical that like you lose when you don't have sunlight or you know. Uh -huh. it, it, but it basically gives you temporary amnesia. Um, you some some people lose the ability to speak very well. Um, they say that by the end of a six month overnight at the South Pole Station, people like grunt a lot at each other and like don't speak and and get really hostile. To each yeah. other, um, there's a lot of fights, a lot of alcohol abuse. Um, basically, it's it's a grueling to, to spend six months um, in polar darkness. It's like, like, awful. It, it 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 breaks people for yeah. you know. Sounds like you um, turn into like a drunk caveman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like um, I don't know if this is true. This was a story that was relayed to the guy who I interviewed. But he said one time, um, towards the end of one of these overnights, a guy came into the uh, mess hall and basically found four people around somebody who was down on the ground and one guy had like a hammer and they were getting ready to start to really maybe kill this guy um, and it was because he had like had his headphones turned up too loud or something hmm. like it was the oh, most trivial just... thing and it was just like this Lord of the Flies like wow people just lost it you know yeah that's it's, really weird it's, it's, oh, in, it's, no. it's yeah um, if you go to the other oh, side if you go mm -hmm. yeah, straight ahead see yep. that building over there yep. that you couldn't get into before right now I've got the blowtorch yeah now you got the blowtorch yeah. so I mean, I, I hate being the like. Oh, no, 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 that, no but, it's fine. But for, yeah. but for a stream, it's kind of like you know you want to. No, definitely. I guess you want to see a little more. I'm gonna warm up in here real quick. Yeah, totally. But yeah, so so it's crazy what happens to people. Um, yeah, that's something I I had never heard about before. But then yep. again, you know, like unless you're actively researching it, there are not a lot of people that go to Antarctica anyway. I so. would love to go. It's so not, bad. Yeah, you just don't hear about that kind of stuff very often. Yeah, well, they I actually don't. they actually do a lot of space exploration research down in Antarctica because it's the closest thing to just being completely you know, cut off on a spaceship yep. hurtling towards Mars. Yeah. yeah. There was an article about that recently as well. That was that was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's nuts down there, man. It takes a special person. There, there's actually a really great doc. There's two really great documentaries. If anyone watching is interested in um, Antarctica, there's two fantastic oh boy. Uh, documentaries. One of them's called... Um, a Year on Ice. It's called, I believe, it's called Antarctica. A Year on Ice. Uh huh. And it's a guy who. Um, oh no. He's a, he's a researcher who spent um, a number of seasons down there, and he invented a bunch of um, time lapse photography equipment and stuff. Yeah. So you part, you know, get to interview people and find out what it's like down there, and you also get these absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, those shots are gorgeous. Absolutely stunning time lapse stuff. Yeah. Of like, the like, you know, there's one where he's like on the tallest. Um, building in McMurdo, which is the main base there. And at a certain time of year, there's no sunset, but the sun makes like a full, like it stays on the horizon and does a full orbit. And he has the camera pointed at it over an entire 24 seconds. So it's this incredible 360, like watching wow. the sun go around the entire base one day. Damn. Um, so that's one of them. And then Werner Herzog did one called Encounters at the End of the World. Yeah, that oh, yeah. Is incredible. Um, and that one's outstanding as well. That one focuses a lot more on what it does to the people down there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this great, um, there's a couple blogs of people who have been down there, but there's one, one of my favorite things about like what Antarctica does to you is um, this guy starts an article and he's like, I knew I'd been down in Antarctica too long um, when I was going out in the field to go pick up some equipment or whatever. And he's like, um, so I you know, put on my headphones. He's like, I put my right earbud in and then I put my left earbud in my mouth really? and started playing music. And it just didn't register. It just didn't register to him. He was, and wow. he, he realized like, why, what's in my, why did I put my earbud in my mouth and start listening to music? And it's just like, it, it just, it, it wrecks you. And it's just, it's the lack of sunlight, or, the, or does it happen when it's, they have a long day? Lack of day? sunlight, isolation, there's also 0% um, humidity, like it's, um, Antarctica is the largest desert in the world. It doesn't seem that way because you're like, oh, look at all that ice and water. Uh -huh. um, but it's actually incredibly um, arid. Really? And so, yeah, and, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, and you look at, um, you know, uh, Scandinavian countries, uh -huh. higher it's suicide rates, oh, no. etc. you know, like extended periods of darkness are not healthy for, for people. Yeah. 
I have just talked a lot. Ryan should say a lot of things now. <laughs> no, no. I mean, that's really interesting stuff. And that, that goes, just goes back to a lot of the research you've been doing for uh, or had done for, for creating this game. Yeah. Which is, which is it's really weird. Oh, you're going to want to keep going up, my friend. Up, oh, up, really? Up. Oh, yeah. I'll I can't warm steps. up in this little room. You can. You can warm yeah, up yeah, anywhere you want. Yeah. You know, it's anywhere you safe. damn well please. I was, your base. wasn't sure where my next uh, you're the player. Yeah. room base was going to be. I, th I think you paid $15 for this game. It's your game. <laughs> and maybe this is from Pirate Bay. I don't know. Hey, don't buy this game. Come on. Don't, don't hire any game. Oops. Wrong door. Uh, before. Yeah, before. Long it Dark came early, out before yeah. this was in development. Yep. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, well, basically, like, the, I think one of the key realizations I had, because, like, when I started, I just want to make a cool game about Antarctica, because I just, I just think it's a fascinating place. And a survival game seemed like kind of a natural fit, and so I started doing like a traditional survival game, you know, hunger, thirst, warmth, you know, all the traditional meters and stuff. Um, ladders. Ladders uh. and video games. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I, I realized that not only did they just have like a year and a half head start with a big team, so I was like, there's no way I could ever compete with it. But also, um, there, oh, it's getting chilly. if you think about it, there, the, a lot of survival games, all survival games, are about the environment and being able to sort of pillage that environment for your um, supplies and stuff. And so a lot of those games are like, okay, I need to cut down a tree to make wood for fire. I need to go hunt an animal for food. I need to, this, that, and the other. And I realized that Antarctica is utterly barren. Um, there's a little bit of life around some of the, you know, more northern parts on the shores, you know, you can find some birds that live there and seals and things. But like, if you're in the heart of Antarctica, there's nothing. It's like being in an empty room. And so it was like, there's nothing to scavenge. So the environment didn't even lend itself to being able to support traditional survival gameplay. Um, and it also, again, just like, I was like, look, there's enough survival games that follow that model. I want to make something that's like really intense and immersive and moment to moment. Um, I like the, the, my like corny catchphrase for that is like, a lot of survival games have like four, four meters that take like 10 minutes to bleed down. You know, your food, your hunger, your th you know. Mm -hmm. And our game has one meter and it takes 90 seconds. Is, is the way I think about it. It's like there's only it's just cold, and and you're always getting ready to die. Like you're always you're net you're so intensely focused on the moment and the immersion and the experience of it that like you're not you're not thinking about God. I've got to go find a hamburger because you know my calories are getting low. You're like, am I going to make it to the next building without dying? Oh God, I can't see where I'm going. You know, mm -hmm. like that just that moment to moment intensity is really what you know I wanted to capture. And you use all your tools to help. Exactly. You do that exactly. one thing yeah. before you die, or like oh God, just deal with that one issue before you hopefully don't die. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like you can't even see where you are right now. You know, like, and this is where the brightness turned up. You know, like, it, oh God. Yeah. Um, so so if you think about it, like, there's a lot we don't have that traditional survivor games do have. There's nothing wrong with traditional survivor games. It's just like why enter a market that's crowded with teams that have more resources than you. It's just a, you know suicide. Uh -huh. But also like, not many of them have moments that are of the intensity and the, the sort of overwhelming, you know, aesthetics that, that we do whenever we really kick up the storm and, you know, the effects are really kicking in and you're really freezing to death and you're really, like, can I make it this 50 feet, uh -huh. you know? So we just tried to focus on that one very narrow experience and, and do it as, as well as we could. A uh, good stopover room here. Yeah, it is. It Let's is. that door open nice. for yourself. Very nice. <laughs> I think this is powered once you, yeah, once yep. the orange yeah, is open. Yeah, you don't obviously. Need yep. Yeah. All right. Nice. Well done. So I'm in fuel now, yep. and I need to get to the garage. Okay. Yeah, it's a long way, buddy. Yeah, it's not going to be fun. Uh, I wish I had more rope poles, but I think that's a dream that's going to die. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to have to take this piece by piece, I think. All right. Uh, I believe that is the case. You can do. I believe in you. Thank you. But like now, like no now, yeah, now now the wind is <laughs> now the wind and the you know cold is is enough that like. You're like, okay, I should stop over and power. Like, right. it's like yeah, that's exactly how I feel yeah, right now. It's, it's like, like 30 <laughs> feet away. Okay, good. That's some, that's some good heat. That's even, <laughs> even closer. Yeah, some good heating. Yeah. Nice little frosty rug on the floor. Yeah. Let's see if I oh, can. Oh, see, this is what happens when you when you don't close doors, my friend. Mm. There you go. It's like Arrested Development. Yeah, exactly. this is why yeah. you always close. You it just fight. Yeah, what Walter was the guy's Weatherman's. name? What was the guy's name? Like H. Williams. It's Jay Walter, Walter Weatherman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, here and that's why you don't leave the door open with the air conditioning running. <laughs> and that's why you don't go to Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
that's true. <laughs> that's still <laughs> facing in the right direction. That's actually what this game is, though. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for that tiny little building. Really should we should have. I sh that should have been an achievement. If you die indoors because there was a door left open, <laughs> it would have been yeah, like an Arrested Development reference. That's why that would have that would that was yeah. the one we were looking for. Yeah. <clears throat> Future back. <clears throat> yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, some of our achievements have cute names. I can't remember. Oh, the actually the one you're getting ready to get is a really good, is a really uh, cute little. If, if I don't die, which is <laughs> yeah. Now you, dude, I likely. believe in you. Look, oh, just through the darkness, you can I, see a little bit of light. It was I, a good. It was smart move to do the uh, the Parker liner upgrade for sure. Yeah, yeah. Imagine this when you were freezing thirty percent faster. <laughs> but you're still not wearing pants. Correct. No, you're yeah. still you still have frostbitten knees. I can upgrade to blowtorch pants though, right? Yes. That's a thing. All right, sweet. Oh, oh it's tight in here, buddy. Oh no. This is this is oh, the one thing. All right. Uh, that rope follows your friend. But you can't crouch. I crouch. Uncrouch. Oh, you don't need to crouch when you're on a rope trail. There, there you go. go. Yeah, you're just doing this. Yeah, you're, you're good. Just, you're just going yeah, for you're it. Yeah, good. I love. I love Do those it. floodlights. Bold moves. I like this. <laughs> those spotlights are such a nice image. They they yeah. help out. It makes you feel like there's hope. Like, yes. I can do yeah. it. Can't close while carrying. Yeah. So the the like difficulty you're having dropping is the blessing and the curse of being able to carry things anywhere. Oh, mm. yeah. Lo lots of work into not ever being able to screw yourself. Right. Um, because it basically does, it like projects out a, um, that object's shape into the world mm. and does not let you play, drop Oof. it if, if it would go through the world. So it's There's like, one more thing to place too. You, had, yeah. you collected another item that, that yeah, just drop down right. uh, inside uh, the, the door. Ooh, that chest might have something good in it. Or it might Which be one? empty. Who knows? This guy, oh, this thing? Yeah. yeah. And can, so condition one, basically when the game starts, it is this weather mm. for the entire thing, oh, and uh, you also uh, get way less items when you loot stuff. So it is, it is, Jesus. it is brutal. Yeah, there you go. Awful. Inside that door there uh, in the snowcat, you can also place your other item that you. Can oh do. right, right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot I got that. And then here comes my achievement name. <gasps> Going, Going ham. ham. <laughs> nice. There uh, you go. Awesome. Additionally, right. on that note, though, I think. That's We're at time. I think. Okay. We went, did we go ham? So it's a good stopping point. You just went ham. You just went ham. Uh, and good stopping point. A bunch of things. I'm just gonna see what McGord has to say real quick. Okay. That's why success. You always leave a no. <laughs> I have we know no what, idea. We know what Ryan's doing yeah, now. Yeah. I believe Ryan is working on Psychonauts. Psychonauts too. 2 is a very exciting project to be part of. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no idea. That's my answer. <laughs> There's near death, then nearer death, yeah. then <laughs> dead. Then actual death. And then th that's how this time is back yeah. into doom. Dead, then Just doom. Just do dead, dead and doom. Dead, then this doom. This is a monolithic message, if memory serves. Yeah. But it's referenced in the text. Mm. That's Which a whole bunch of stuff I just said. very smart thing to do. It's very Danny. At least be aware of it. Yeah. Oh, this is a good line. <laughs> 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 Cool. Wow, awesome guys. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for yeah. playing. Thanks a ton, you guys, for both like sitting with us while. Oh no problem. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for letting us. Thanks for letting us show it on the stream. It's been really fun. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of cool stuff to cover too. Like, I mean, the idea of just messaging your game. Like, how do you a stand out? B, what message do you choose when advertising your game? Like, yeah. Do you go with survival or do you not go with survival? Which one actually yeah, we, draws more people to your game? You're like, yeah. Great question. It yeah. is a great question. There's no answer to any of this, but you guys picked a lot of interesting routes for this. And I mean, the way you approach the game, period, is kind of cool. It's like survival game, but take out all the horror elements and just have one thing that you worry about mm -hmm. and everything focuses on that. It's really yeah. cool. So uh, cool. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks everyone for watching and for yeah. asking questions. Uh, and then do you guys have anything else you want to say? Aside from everyone should buy the game because it's really yeah. intense and really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Neardeathgame.com. Totally cool. All there right. Thanks everyone. We'll be all back right. next Thank week. You. Thanks a lot. Uh, and we'll see you around. Bye. And that's for Dad.